This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio, ABC Sport Digital, and take us with you on the ABC Listener. Look for the AFL button. A big warm welcome to a historic night at Cadinia Park. For the first time, a little behind schedule, the revamped stadium is ready to go and to host its first AFL game as a 40,000 capacity venue. It might be the biggest crowd we've seen since 1981 and a chance for the Cats and the Saints to kick open their season with a new stand, the Joel Selwood stand, featuring 14,000 capacity and maybe the best spot in the house is standing room just in front of the stand named in the Premiership Captain's Honour. Hello, welcome to Saturday Night Footy. It's a perfect night down the coast, around 30, around 22 degrees and uh, what has been a uh, another electric start to the footy season with the Giants prevailing by 39 points over North Melbourne and the Bombers too strong for the Hawks earlier today. Matt Clinch with you for ABC Sport. I'm delighted to say Saturday night I'll be sharing the microphone with Lauren Board. Welcome to you, Loz. Thanks, Clinchy. It's nice to start the year up at Cadinia Park on a beautiful night here and to see that new stand in action. It's completely packed at the moment and I think I've just got to pay credit to a few of those St Kilda banner riders who went with the new stand is finished, there's no going back. No steel shortage here. We've brought our skip jack. So I liked that, given the delays in getting this stand up and going and the steel shortage. They're in fine form, and hopefully the Saints can follow suit. Absolutely. There's a few questions that have to be answered from a Geelong point of view, having missed the finals last year after their premiership in 2022. So can they be back competing in 2024? And what will their new look midfield look like without Cameron Guthrie tonight? Unfortunately for the Saints, it hasn't been a happy hunting ground for them. They've lost their last 11 matches here at Cadinia Park. So dating back to 1999, back in round 10 was the last time the Saints won here some 25 years ago. But they have played the majority of their matches in Melbourne. The two debutants will be the sub tonight. So Sean Mannon, who's a great story for Geelong, picked up through the VFL. He was best on ground in the VFL Grand Final. So great to see he get his opportunity as a mature age recruit picked up from Werribee. And Lance Collard from the Saints uh, picked 28 in last year's draft. The Western Australian will start with the substitute vest on tonight. Australian Football Hall of Fame member, St Kilda champion Nathan Burke is with us for another season. Welcome to you, Berkey. Hello, Clinchy. Hello, Lauren. Yes, lovely to be here. And uh, in 1999, I remember it well. <laughs> Came down here, we flogged them, we went home happy. It's been a long, <laughs> long time in between then and now. So uh, hopefully those same supporters get to uh, revisit that uh, long-held feeling. Or the alternative, it'd be a good party to spoil tonight. If the Saints are able to win tonight and open their season and the cats on their, their back feet it would be an impressive way to open a new season absolutely i'm really excited they've had a really good pre-season um what i think you'll see tonight from the saints is a faster a pacier side they've brought in liam henry and darcy wilson and uh lance collard as you mentioned riley bonner all got really good leg speed so that was something that they really lacked and uh hopefully we'll see that on show tonight and a two-time premiership player with the Hawks. It's great to have Brad Saul with us down the highway tonight. Welcome to you, Sully. Clinchy, thanks very much. And fantastic evening here at Geelong as the sun sets behind us. Uh, it's just, just the, the last shades of light on the new stand. It just looks incredible. I was walking down beneath us here and uh, everybody's very excited to see it for the first time, as they should be. And yeah, like Berkey, there's some exciting... Exciting prospects for the Saints here, a, a new look side. Uh, not all is new for Geelong as Patrick Dangerfield went to toss the coin. And joining us tonight on the boundary is Rory Campbell. Welcome to you, Rory. What are conditions like at ground level? Good evening, Ted. Absolutely fantastic down here. Not much in the way of breeze. Anything that is floating around is probably favouring that Selwood stand and but it's expected to die out as the evening goes on. So that's not going to impact the game at all. It is pristine conditions. The Cats won the toss. Patrick Dangerfield choosing to kick towards the Selwood stand then. Should be a cracker, team. That's going to the news. Thank you, Rory. Great to have you on the boundary tonight. So the stage is set. The Joel Selwood stand glistening as the sun sets. And Chris Scott looking to show Geelong have more than enough talent to wrestle their way back into contention in 2024. Or will it be the Saints who have been ridden off a few times over the last couple of years? And Ross Lyon who would love to spoil the party tonight. It's round one, Saturday night footy, Geelong and St Kilda. Here's Lauren Borden to get us underway. The beginning of a new season for these two sides. Marshall and Stanley go at it. Stanley gets the tap away. Philip who takes it, but then he's tackled. We'll have another ball up just outside the two centre circles. 
quickly tosses the ball up. Marshall with the tap away. Hill punches it away. Goes through the hands of Windhager, then goes to Holmes. So the Cats, long kick inside 50 towards that Salwood stand end. Hawkins runs onto it. Can't gather. Stengel's there. Hand passes back outside 50 to Tui, who kicks all the way to the goals, and it's just offline. It'll be a minus score to start proceedings tonight. The one point for Geelong, leading by that score. A minute gone in the first quarter. A little tactical win there for the Cats. The Cats had Blitzarf and Tui on the wings. The Saints had Wood and Hill, and they were trying to get the right matchup. In the end, it left Tui all by himself. Could have already got a shot for goal, but as it's turned out, you've got Hill against Tui and Wood and Blitzarves on the wings. Riley Bronner brings the Saints back into play. New signing alongside Liam Henry up to Mason Wood, who tries to work it further afield. Liam Henry trying to get on the loose footy, but it's a free kick going the way of the Cats. Jake Collard Jazzy will take it. On the interchange side, the broadcast side here at Caninia Park. Comes into the middle of the ground with Deconic Marks. He goes short to Holmes. Out of contract at season's end. The Cats keen to lock him up. Sends it up towards Tui at half forward. Spoiled away from him. Jack Henry races after it. Mitch Owens got there first. Jack Henry becomes the tackler. Owens somehow got a kick forward. He's able to volley it, but only in the path of Holmes, who marks center wing for Geelong on the Reg Hickey stand side. Huge job for Cordy with the Saints. He's picking up um, Hawkins. So Holmes now drives the ball deep inside 50. Mark goes up, up wet. Plitter Stanley, he couldn't take the mark. It'll be a tackle to lock the ball inside 50 for the Cats. The umpire will come in and throw the ball up 40 metres out from Geelong's goal. You can already hear the vocal fans in the Selwood stand. Marshall taps it away. Ross can run onto it for the Saints. Quick hand pass to Hill. This time he shoves it on the boot to get it out of defensive 50 for the Saints. Coming back, though, to take the mark was Holmes. Short chip kick to Myers, and he'll mark the ball 55 metres out from goal. So it's all been the Cats in the opening couple of minutes. Kicks towards Hawkins, can't take the mark. Tanner Brewer had to sit in the hole. It's spoiled down by Cordy. Spills out the way of the Saints. A chance for Bonner to try and clear. Through the middle of the ground, a halfback. Max Kingsworth a long, long way up the ground. He takes it at centre halfback. Releases Brad Hill by hand. His kick just missed the intended target. Set stopper a challenge. Onto it, blitz out. Rides the tackle. Gets the hand pass away to Stingle. He goes Geelong again inside 50. He drives it in the direction of Hawkins. He's caught behind and Cordy. Hugs the mark to his chest of the Saints. 35 metres out from his defensive goal. Geelong are behind. St Kilda yet to score. Cats plenty of opportunity early. they unable to connect with their forwards inside 50. Cordy went out the way of Wood. He couldn't mark it. Battle was on the end of it. It came off his boot. Out of bounds on the full. It will be a free kick for Geelong. Right in front of the Geelong bench. Ola Jasny with the footy. He sends it in the Hawkins direction. Can't mark. Henry was at the back. Hawkins tries to curve it towards the goals, but it's out of bounds on the full. So score stays the same with Geelong leading by a sole point after three minutes in the first quarter. All time they realised their hawk. He just plucked it out of midair, but could have taken the ball in his hands and, uh, and had a snap. He'll go short to Callum Wilkie, who marks in the left back pocket for the Saints. Drives it up towards Rowan Marshall. The Coney was able to crash the pack from the back. It's Henry for the Saints who gathers, though. Hand pass too slick for Steele, sliding in Dangerfield. But Geelong can't, can't control it, and it goes out of play. All the inside 50s you mentioned, Sully going Geelong's way. 5-0 to zero in the opening. What are we up to? Four minutes so far. Umpire readies himself to throw it back into play. The sun's still setting here in Geelong. The floodlights glistening over the top of the Joel Selwood stand. It's knocked down by Reece Stanley for Geelong. Racing after it, Tanner Bruin. He wrestles with Ross as the ball eventually spills clear. Danger field for Geelong. Another kick inside 50. Looking for Hawkins. Got rid of his opponent, but dropped the mark. Did all the hard work and then it bounced into the very bottom of the behind post. And a boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for Geelong. A point play zero. Two Saints defenders ran into each other, which left Hawkins standing all alone, but it's just slipped through his fingers. Hawkins to do the ruck work. Tries to get it away. It'll be Philippu with the hand pass for the Saints to steal. Back to Marshall. He's dispossessed of the footy. Blitzarves gets a tackle down to the ground from Steel. And again, the ball will be locked inside 50 for the Cats. 40 metres out, another ball up. All the Cats early in this opening round flash. Hill can hold on to the tap, but then he's tackled. And he'll be, he'll be held up with the footy. This time 30 metres out from Geelong's goal. It's all the cats at the moment. Six inside 50s and none. Hawkins tries to drop it down, does his own crumbing in the end. Hand pass away to Myers. He gets the hand pass to Clark, who gets it away to Cameron around the body to the goal mouth. Ollie Henry's outnumbered. He spills it down to the front, close against the boundary. Henry tries to knock it on to Blitzass. He's brought down by Cordy. Good tackle. 
And the umpire will ball it up in the left forward pocket for the Cats. They leave one behind to St Kilda at the score. So St Kilda still managing to lock it up inside this defensive 50, not letting Geelong have an easy chance at it. Out the back, Myers overruns it. Dangerfield on hands and knees can hand pass it out. Wilkie comes in, steals it for St Kilda. Hand pass to Philippu. It's Windhager who's taken down. Umpire says play on. The Saints are able to move the ball outside of defensive 50. Duncan clashes, but then Higgins can pick it up for the Saints. He puts it in some space in front of memory. He's got a steady. Take the ball. Turn around. Spin. From 55 metres out, there's no one ahead of him. He goes for goal. One bounce through for the first goal of the night. The Saints season opener comes from Tim Memory. His comeback game, a late out from the elimination final for St Kilda. His comeback game, he scores the first goal. All his Saints teammates come around him to pat him on the back. And it's St Kilda now with the lead. One straight six, leading Geelong, the one behind. Six minutes gone in the first quarter. And after all of Geelong's attacking, it's St Kilda with the first goal. Well, the, the Cats fans are, are booing because they thought it should have been a, a holding the ball or dropping the ball decision against the Saints inside their defensive 50 before it shot down the other end. But the fact is, if a player... As soon as they grab the footy and they try to kick the ball, they're allowed to actually drop the ball. That's that's the rule. As long as they haven't had prior opportunity, taken one or two steps. And that's what happened. Correct call by the umpire. And then it was just off to the races. And Membry actually outran Stanley, who's one of the fastest players in the league. A quick pirouette and a shot from 50. So uh, certainly against the run of play by any means. The voice of Nathan Burke with you on Grandstand AFL. Opening goal the way of the Saints through Tim Membry. Back in the middle. Marshall has a big tackle. Ball spills clear. Steele gets the hand pass away to Crouch. Kicks up towards the attacking 50. In from the side, Zach Guthrie. Good contested mark as he claims it in front of Burns. Swings onto his right-hand side. Straight down the middle into the path of Cameron. He comes out and crashes the back. Stocker for the Saints. Hand pass looking for Crouch. Can't gather. Now becomes the tackler. Henry trying to get involved for the Saints. Cameron has a go. He overran the footy. Crouch just socks it off the ground. Gained 10 metres, but it's Collar Jasney for the Cats who gathers. Back into the edge of the centre square. Hand pass to Stewart. Links up with Holmes. Trying to take on the tackler. Just got the hand pass away at the last moment. To Conan kicks up towards half forward. Mark O'Connor back with a flight. Could claim the mark, but will get a free kick. It's just inside 50 out to the right. The front on contact there from uh, Brad Hill was a little bit soft, but uh, technically probably there. So the Irishman out to the right. He'll have to kick from just outside 50 to the Joel Selwood stand-in here at Cadinia Park. A little stutter as he veers out to the right to try and get every millimetre and misses offline to the right-hand side. And a minor score. The Saints one straight six through Tim Membry. The Cats two behinds through eight minutes here at Cadinia Park. So Bonner set to bring it in. Short chip kick, 40 metres out from goals. Jack Steele holds onto the mark. Right back pocket. He looks to go down the broadcast wing in front of the benches. Jack Henry had front position, but the mark will be taken by the Saints, and King has it. So able to outmark his opponent. Long kick down to half forward for St Kilda, looking for their second goal of the night. Standing up tall to take the mark, none other than Stewart. The Cats, reigning best and fairest, takes the mark, left half back with Geelong trailing by four points. He goes back inside the defensive 50 to Collar Jasny, who works at wider still out to the right-hand side of Max Holmes Marks. Running into space is to Koning on the hickey stand wing. He takes the mark in front of Win Hager. Gets the hand pass away to Myers with that characteristic kick around the body. Moves it up around the boundary line, and O'Connor takes the mark. Now the next kick towards half forward. Blitzhouse presents. Off his hands, he can't claim it. Hawkins is after the loose footy. Can't gather. He's had a few fumbles, Tom Hawkins. And a boundary throw in 55 metres out from the Cats goal. Matt Clinch and Lauren Borden calling the action. Nathan Burke and Brad Sewell are your experts with Rory Campbell on the boundary for ABC Sport. Ten minutes gone in the opening term. Packed house at Cadinia Park. The 40,000 in for tonight. As the ball's tossed back in at half forward for Geelong. It'll bounce on the floor. Marshall lying down, can't get to it. Myers can for the Cats. Hand pass to Atkins. Kicks forward. As he's being bumped off the footy, Tui runs onto it. He's taken in a strong tackle. Hand passes up high. Umpire says play on. Owens can gather for the Saints. Hand pass to Henry. Hand pass away to Stocker. And they're going on their way now, the Saints. King with it now. Dinky kick forward. 
Membry can't take the mark. Stewart was able to worry him out of it. Then he gets a knock, Stewart. Umpire says play on. Cat's not happy with no free kick there. You can hear the boos in the background. As the umpire comes in now to ball it up 40 metres out from St Kilda's goal. Let's head down to Rory Campbell on the boundary. And guys, Tanner Bruin came off a short time ago. He was running gingerly. He pointed straight to his left ankle, and he's headed to the rooms with some trainers to uh, get a check-up on that. I'll keep you posted on if he comes back out. Thanks, Rory. He also got a bit of a knock in the head in a, a tackle in the middle of the ground too. So uh, in his 50th game, let's hope he can get back out there. Steele was able to bust his way through. Hand pass to memory. Back to Borna from 55. A long-range shot. It's offline to the left. Just couldn't quite work it back enough left to right. And the counter-attacking is working for the Saints. They're 1-1-7 to the Geelong Cats. Two behinds through 11 minutes opening term. Riley Bonner has been very impressive over pre-season. In the pre-season games that they've played, he's been close to their best on in both of them. Cats move it out quickly to left half back where Tui has the footy. Flat kick long all, uh, down the wing. Just drops it in front of Cameron. All the players happy to just watch it and see it over the boundary line. Four thrown directly in front of our broadcast position. Touched on it there before, Clinchy. That rebound slingshot put from the Saints from half back has been really dangerous. Leg speed just too much for John at the moment. So Marshall taps it away. Henry with some athleticism can't grab the footy. Players dive on top of the ball and we'll have another ball up. So Paddy Dangerfield running back onto the field now, just barking out some instructions before he does and then running straight into the contest. Marshall taps it away to Crouch. Hand pass away, umpire blows his whistle, pushing the back, crouch free. Saints able to play advantage. Still, quick kick finds Philippou right in front of the interchange gates. Saints leading by five. The kick went about seven metres. Yes, Matteo Philippus. Filippo inboard finds Liam Henry, the former Fremantle docker who made his transition to Moorabbin in the off-season. Spots Mitch Owens free, can he get it to him? Clark goes out in front, did well to bring it down. Jack Henry with the hand pass away to Atkins. And now a chance to clear off the outside of the boot from Dempsey. And that goes out of bounds on the full. A free kick will go the way of the Saints in front of the two benches. The Saints leading by five points through the opening 13 minutes here. Isaiah Wanganin Miller will take the free kick. Eyes darting into the corridor. Not a lot on offer, so he tries to run around. Brad close on the mark and then pulls his kick to the congestion. Marshall's in the pack, spoils it down. Cole Jesse tried to spin out of traffic. That might be prior opportunity. And he's penalised holding the ball. Max King wanted it, but it's going to end up in the hands of Darcy William uh, Darcy Wilson. The first-year Saint from the Wang Tigers. He drives them along towards the teeth of goal. Member, he sets himself. Spoiled down by Tom Stewart. Crumbing at the front is uh, Steely. Tries to slap it on in the direction of Crouch. It's Atkins, though, for the Cats. Clearing kick in the middle of the ground. And Tom Hawkins takes the mark on his chest. So Hawkins from centre-half back has Dempsey running. Takes the mark on the wing. Just skies the ball up. It'll be a two-on-one here. Henry was the one. Wilkie stands back. Takes the mark. Again, the Geelong oh. fans aren't happy and they will be repaid. It'll be a free kick to Ollie Henry for holding. One umpire overruled the other one. So one umpire said, yes, that's fine for a mark, but the one who was positioned inside Geelong's forward, 50 said, no, 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 I'm going to pay shepherding against uh, Wanganin, Alera, which is a little bit stiff, had his eyes on the footy. And it was a bit of an average kick too from Dempsey, but the Cats get away with it. As Ollie Henry comes in, from directly in front, 45 metres out. The kick might drop short. It'll be offline anyway for just a minor score. So Henry with a behind. It's now St Kilda leading by four points after 14 minutes in the opening term. The voice of Lauren Borden calling the action tonight alongside Matt Clinch, Rory Campbell down on the boundary, Nathan Burke and Brad Sewell are your experts. As the Saints look to bring themselves back into play, Wagon and Miller with a beautiful pass that spots Mason Wood. At right half back, he can poke it over the top to Filippo. He marks on his chest at right half back. Filippo's been training as a midfielder this year, whereas we saw him last year in his first year primarily as a, uh, a mobile forward. Switches back inside the defensive 50 to Cal Wilkie. His kick was over the head of Cordy. He reels it in with his right arm, is able to gather, gets the hand pass away to Hill. Barely 15 to Wanganin Miller, so play on is the call. Turns and looks into the middle of the ground. Stocker takes the mark. Under the red hickey stand here. He's got battle in the middle of the crowd, but he missed him and kicks laterally wider and Wanganin Miller up marks once more. Poke a kick over the top as the Saints just try and force the Cats to try and man up. 
Swinging onto the right-hand side. Wilson kicks into the middle of the ground. Getting back, Cameron makes the spoil for Geelong. Atkins gathers. Hand pass to Collajasny. Looks out to Dempsey, who can't take the mark. A bounce off his chest as Mason Wood raced back just to put enough pressure on him. Regathers and gets the hand pass to Tui. He kicks 25 metres backwards and finds Jack Henry inside the defensive 50. Jack Henry kicks 20 minutes forward where he found, finds Tom Atkins on the paint of 50. That was an inexperienced kick there by Wilson to kick it to centre forward. It's the last place the coaches want you to kick the ball in a very uh, suspect way. Zach Guthrie kicked it long to O'Connor who goes short to close in the long sleeves. We'll get a free as well for being taken a little high by Wilkie. So close will have it. Right half forward, 55 metres out from Geelong's goal. Still yet to put a major on the board, despite having plenty of the play in this opening term. Close will go high, top of the goal square, and hope for a mark. Cameron went up, couldn't take it. Hawkins got a hand on it. Saints under pressure. They'll be able to get it out through Windhager, who hand passes it away to Wanganin Malera, across to Wilkie, and he'll kick the Saints out of danger to the wing, out of side of the ground. And the Saints will keep moving here. It'll be a hand pass across to Philippou. He doesn't have a lot further afield, so has to buy some time. Hand passes to Hill, boundary side. Long kick into the middle of the ground. Setting himself. Higgins can't climb over the top of Stewart. King comes racing in. Tackle, but got the hand pass away. Cooper Sharman gets the hand pass back to Higgins. 50 from home. Vacant goal mouth. It's bouncing. It's bouncing. It almost gets there, too. He got back at the last moment. The ever-reliable Irishman to rush it through for a minor score. It's the Saints 1-2-8 doing the early running here against Geelong. Three behinds. The inside 50 is heavily the way of the Cats, though. 10 to 5 through the opening 17 minutes. Interesting way they're both moving the ball. Geelong, very laboured. A lot of short passes getting the ball from one end to the ground to the other because we know Saints are very good. Ross Lyons' teams are always great at setting up a zone. But once they get it, boy, they're off to the races. So uh, certainly taking the game on once they get the ball in hands. So Holmes kicked it out to the outer side wing. Atkins picked it up and kicked it across to the captain in Dangerfield. Spots up Ollie Henry at centre-half forward. Takes the grab and will now put Geelong inside 50 towards Dempsey. All alone in space. Takes the mark. 45 metres out, 45 degree angle. It'll be another set shot for the Cats. Cleanest transition from the Cats we've seen and it was instigated by Dangerfield on the far wing. Just managing to overcommit Bradley Hill who, uh, who should have stayed on the inside of Danger but overcommitted allowing Dangerfield to come back inside and a penetrating kick the top of the 50. So Ollie Dempsey to have a set shot. And his place in the side after a sensational past three weeks. Training at Geelong. Can he be the first one to slot a goal in front of the Joel Selwood stand? He can. Ollie Dempsey with the Cats first of the night. And the Selwood stand start waving their flags and cheering. It's Geelong hitting the lead now. 1-3-9 to St Kilda. 1-2-8. Nearly 20 minutes played in the opening quarter at Cadinia Park. Yeah, good finish there by Dempsey. He's been quite lively. He's been pushing right back into defence and then shooting up the uh, the wing. As playing as at half forward, he's covering a, a lot of ground and uh, as all good half forwards should do, get up the ground, run back into a hole. And uh, great finish there. So first goal at the Joel Selwood end. And it's good to see quite impressive light show here once the goal's kicked uh, down at Geelong. The lights go on and off, on and off, and it's uh, almost sort of Docklands-ish. That's a uh, trivia question. Who kicked the first goal? Yeah. <laughs> the Geelong faithful. What do you think of the new stand? Surely they've come um, a long way since the Roadhouse at Carraro, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. Got a world-class it's restaurant fantastic. in there as well. Chance for the Cats to try and get the clearance once more. Bursting out of the middle. The kick from Myers up towards Dempsey. He can't quite complete the mark. He knocks it on to Hawkins. He tries to shovel it back into play. It was over the boundary line and a throw in in the left forward pocket. So 14,000 in the new Joel Selwood stand. There is standing room only. So throw back to the, the days of the, the 90s at Victoria Park and some of the suburban grounds. Joel was number 14, wasn't he? He was. <laughs> Should have been number 25. Couldn't imagine how big the stadium would be then. All licks up with some nice symmetry. Mason Wood gathers for the Saints off the stoppage. Hand pass away to Riley Bonner. Blazes to wake it. Space. It bounces. End over end. Out of play. And the umpire says insufficient intent. So free kick going the way of the count. Zach Guthrie takes it quickly. And short to Mitch Duncan. I think if the, if the play could pick up the ball before it goes across the line, they allow it to run across the line, it shouldn't be insufficient intent. 
Just 16 games last season for Mitch Duncan as he goes short to Tom Stewart in the middle of the ground and then out to Jeremy Cameron. Too far out to score. He kicks into the pocket. Hawkins had already led. He missed Dangerfield and the mark is taken by Cordy of the Saints. Gets the hand pass away to Bonner. They work it out of defence and Sharman marks to the Saints at left half back. Geelong leading by a point. Cooper Sharman just waiting a little bit to wait for his teammates to get ahead of him. Along that hickey stand wing he goes, pack forming. Stewart got front position to King. And both saw the ball over the boundary line where we'll have a throw in centre wing. Hickey stand side of the ground. Three premiership flags waving in the wind. They've just updated one with 2022, but still keeping those three flag posts there, not updating it to four. As Windhager, uh, Marshall rather, gets the ball out from the middle, kicks forward to half forward for the Saints. It'll be Stewart sending it back the other way. Mark uh, taken by Marshall at centre wing out of side of the ground. Looks to work it over the top. Saints in no real urgency to move it too quickly at the moment. And the mark is taken by Windhager at half back. He looks to drive a long ball inside 50. Max King flies with Sharman as well. Spills to the front. O'Connor for the Cats. Bounced into Seb Ross. Can't break clear. 55 metres out from the Saints goal. It's Geelong 139 to the Saints 128. Saturday afternoon, Saturday night footy coming to you from Cadinia Park. As it's thrown up, Marshall and Stanley need to get a decisive tap. O'Connor's over the footy and he's brought down by Filippo and the umpire will do it once more. If you want to join us, of course, on a Saturday night, the SMS number is 0437 774 774. Marshall just punches it out inside 50 for the Saints. It'll be Ross to pick it up. Umpire blows his whistle. Higgins might have been knocked. And it will be a free kick going the way of St Kilda. He's called play on and end up with Max King. So Max King will now have it a few metres in from the boundary line. Left half forward for the Saints. Might be backing himself in with this distance. Going to put the Saints' second goal on the board for the first term here. Heavily weighted crowd in Geelong's favour. Sends the ball towards goal, and it's just missed. So another behind for St Kilda. Scores now level at nine apiece after 22 minutes in the first quarter. Just got some shots of Tanner Bruin still doing a fitness test down in the rooms on that ankle. Sean Mannon on the boo for the Cats is uh, the substitute. As Dangerfield gathers for Geelong on the wing. Out pass trying to link up with Jeremy Cameron. He can't quite get it to Blitzavs. And it goes under, out of play under the hickey stand. Max King, the Bromber for the Saints. Berkey? In a lot of ways, yes. Yeah, when, when for them to play well, he, he has to play well. Played just the 11 games Max King last year for 28 goals. Jack Higgins led the way with 36. As Tanner Bruin is making his way back from the change rooms. Dangerfield kicks to long inside 50. It's too wide for Stengel. And out of bounds on the full of free kick going the way of the Saints in the left back pocket. Hmm. Tanner's not really jogging back to the, towards the bench. I don't know whether he looks a bit forlorn or whether he's ready to go. So Windhager kicks it out, red cheeky wing. Jack Henry picks it up, hand passes it to Atkins, very close to the line, goes over it, and we'll have a throw in centre wing. 14 to 7 inside 50s, thus far in Geelong's favour. So Marshall readying himself to go up against Stanley. Henry in the mix as well for the Saints, coming across from Freo. Stanley punches it down, Ross gets a hand to it, players punching it away, no one can gain control. Atkins gathers it, stolen by Steele. Hand passes away to Henry, who's got some space in front of him. He opts to go for a chip kick towards King. Then he goes and gets the footy himself. So Henry can kick it forward to Owens. Hand passes it away now to Bonner. He's run up to half forward for St Kilda. Kicks inside 50. Higgins takes the mark. Henry is so creative and dangerous forward of the ball. You just cannot afford to let him get goal side. So Higgins now on the end of some of Henry's great work will have a shot at goal. 35 metres out, just getting realigned by the umpire. Getting close to quarter time. Higgins shanks the kick off his boot. Just the minor score now for the Saints. They have a one-point lead, 10 to 9. Let's head down to Rory Campbell on the boundary. Yeah, guys, 
Tanner Bruin is back on the bench. They're still assessing his ankle injury and if he's able going to be been, going to be able to get back on the field. Right now, he's just rolling the legs over on the bike. Sean Manor hasn't really uh, sort of embarked on a full-scale warm-up just yet, but still assessing Tanner Bruin. Thanks, Rory. Ross inside 50 for the Saints. No mark claim. Holmes under pressure. Hand pass to Dangerfield. Gets the hand pass away to De Koning. Kicks out towards Dempsey. Can't quite complete the mark. And it's spoiled out of play by Riley Bonner. And a boundary throw in at left half forward for the Cats. Riley Bonner, he's had one shot for goal. And it's a beautiful pass across to Higgins on that last one. So even though he's playing on that half back line, he's got license to push up the ground as far as he can because he's such a good user of the ball on that left foot. St Kilda leading by a point. As Brad Crouch kicks inside 50, bouncing end over end towards Henry. He can't gather under the pressure of Zach Guthrie, and it goes out of play for a throw in. So the Saints 1 3, uh, Geelong 1 3 9 to St Kilda 1 4 10. The goal scorers Tim Membry and Ollie Dempsey. 26 minutes gone, but a low scoring affair, so it won't be a long opening quarter here at Cadena Park. Umpire will toss it in deep inside St Kilda's attacking 50. Henry's on the end of it here. He gets tackled. Has to hand pass it away. It'll skid along the ground. Kick will come now from Wilson. And it won't be an opening goal for their deb debuting player. Another minor score for the Saints. Two points now. The Saints lead. Getting close to quarter time at Cadinia Park. Zach Guthrie brings Geelong back into play. Kick in to Mitch Duncan, the ever-reliable half-backer. He sends it up towards Jack Henry in from the side. Good mark over Wanganee Miller. Hand pass to Blitzhams. Links up with Close. They've got it up to the wing already, Geelong. Hand pass over the top, trying to link up once more with Blitzhams. Cal Wilkie did well. Slid in. Had to wear the tackles coming. And he locks the ball up at left half forward for Geelong. Saints leading by two points. 27 minutes gone. Opening turn from Canidia Park. Still to come tonight, the Gold Coast and Adelaide will keep you across that game, which gets underway in around 10 minutes' time. Wanganee Miller are hard against the boundary. Somehow jams a kick back up the wing. Ross underneath it. Can't complete the mark for the Saints. Myers a little toe poke. Under pressure. De Koning was taken high. Cats take the advantage through Clark. Chisels a kick inside 50. It didn't suit Cameron. And in front, Wanganee Miller takes the mark for the Saints in the right back pocket. Wangadeen Miller, one of the emerging stars of the St Kilda lineup, kicks down the wing. Henry was there, bounced off his chest. It allows Guthrie to take a kick. He shanks it out of bounds on the full. Saints free kick going the way of Windhager. And he'll chip it inboard where he finds Bonner. So St Kilda just happy to slow things down in the final stages of this opening term. As Bonner chips it forward to Ross. So Ross standing in front of the interchange gates will find Henry. Henry jumps up, can't take the mark, falls over Clark. Blitzarves comes in to try and kick the ball away. His kick smothered. Cameron barging through, gets his way through traffic. Dinky kick forward to half forward. Close, running onto it. Has to dodge around Wilkie. Hand pass to a Cameron. Still running in the pocket. Nails it. He wanted to make the pocket his own with the new stand. And that's exactly what Jeremy Cameron has done. Sensational from Cameron. 2 3 15 now Geelong. Leading St Kilda 1 5 11. Let's head down to Rory Campbell on the boundary. Hey guys, Liam Henry pulled up really sore from that at marking contest earlier. He limped straight off. Kind of looking like he's suffering from a, a bit of a, a corky or something like that. He's being assessed by the doctors at the moment, but looking really sore. Yeah, Jai Clark it was with the collision. What about the finish, Sully? Beautifully caught, Lauren, and deep in the left forward pocket. So athletic. He really is, but not only the finish, that, that solo piece of play from the centre wing where he gathered and, and sort of picked his way through three or four players, almost kicked it to himself into space, followed up, and, and not for the first time we've seen him do something pretty special around goal. And it was what Geelong needed. Yeah. They needed, they needed a spark of brilliance because they've been a bit sloppy so far. A fire starter for the Cats as Dangerfield gets the clearance just before quarter time. But the siren rings out and the Cats have their noses in front at the first break. Geelong 2-3-15 to St Kilda 1-5-11. The goals coming for the Cats through Ollie Dempsey and Jeremy Cameron while Tim Membry was the goal scorer for the Saints. Heavily the Cats way in the inside 50s 16-10 and a concern with Tanner Bruin having left the field in that first quarter. Sean Manor is the sub, the mature age recruit from Werribee for the Cats. 
and Lance Collard for the Saints. So two debutants tonight with the substitution vest. On the SMS, 0437 774 And from Melbourne, great to hear the team back up and running, especially great to hear Berkey. And says, new look for sure. I won't recognise too many of my Saints tonight. Certainly a few different players of both sides. And uh, great as well to hear on uh, the SMS from Jackie, who says, great to hear Lauren behind the mic as well tonight. The winners so far today, the Bombers defeated the Hawks by 24 points in front of 73,000 at the MCG. It was Archie Perkins who led the way. 24 disposals, a couple of goals and eight clearances. While the Giants proved too strong for North Melbourne, winning by 39 points in uh, Josh Kelly's 200th match. 17-19-121 to the Roos, 13-4. 82. Great to have your company on Saturday Night Footy on Grandstand AFL on ABC Radio. ABC Sport Digital are now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Hello, I'm Patrick Stack and if you like great stories and you enjoy sport, then I reckon you need ABC Sport Daily in your life. In terms of an apprenticeship to serve in international rugby, well that World Cup was a pretty difficult one. At the risk of making the same mistake twice, I do you think a four-peat might just be a little bit beyond them? Even the coaches allow themselves to be happy and just soak in the moment <laughs> of, of history. It's a daily sports conversation and it's called ABC Sport Daily. Find us on the ABC Listen app. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Duncan clashes, but then Higgins can pick it up for the Saints. He puts it in some space in front of memory. He's got a steady. Take the ball, turn around, spin. From 55 metres out, there's no one ahead of him. He goes for goal. One bounce through for the third goal of the night. Saints season opener comes from Tim Memory. His comeback game, a late out from the elimination final for St Kilda. His comeback game, he scores the first goal. All his Saints teammates come around him to pat him on the back. Tutter Bruin came off a short time ago. He was running gingerly. He pointed straight to his left ankle and he's headed to the rooms with some trainers to uh, get a check-up on that. Kicks it across to the captain in Dangerfield. Spots up Ollie Henry at centre-half forward. Takes the grab. And on the output along inside 50 towards Dempsey. All alone in space. Takes the mark. 45 metres out, 45 degree angle. It'll be another set shot for the Cats. Cleanest transition for the Cats we've seen and it was instigated by Dangerfield. So Ollie Dempsey to have a set shot. He'd be the first one to slot a goal in front of the Joel Selwood stand. He can. Ollie Dempsey with the Cats first of the night. And the Selwood stand start waving their flags and cheering. Dinky kick forward to half forward. Close. Running onto it, has to dodge around Wilkie, hand pass to a Cameron, still running, in the pocket, nails it. He wanted to make the pocket his own with the new stand. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. The Cats had a lot of the footy in the opening quarter, but it was the Saints who were able to put it on the scoreboard until the last goal of the quarter, in which Jeremy Cameron, as you heard there, an absolute ripper deep in the left forward pocket. Geelong 2-3-15, leading the Saints 1-5-11 at the opening break in front of a sold-out crowd here at Cadenia Park. I'm expecting somewhere around 40,000 for tonight. Matt Clinch and Lauren Borden calling the action. Rory Campbell is down on the boundary. The thoughts of Australian football member Hall of Fame Nathan Burke and two-time premiership player with the Hawks, Brad Sewell. Thanks, Clinchy. And it looks like a first game of the season for these two sides. Um, <laughs> both have been... Um, a little bit sloppy, a little bit fumbly, and that includes their senior players as well. Hawkins in front of goals had a number of opportunities to, to take a mark and cleanly take the ball one grab. But you can tell the lift and intensity. You can train for as long as you like in pre-season and have as many intra-clubs uh, and those practice matches, but there's nothing like an AFL season match, and, um, and we've seen that tonight. That being said, um, there were some really clean passages of play. We can see what St Kilda are trying to do with their recruits. Their leg speed, their slingshot from half-back has looked really dangerous. Um, and as Clinchy said, just the, that spark that Geelong needed, a bit of class and experience from Cameron uh, with that fantastic goal late. Berkey, anything to add? Yeah, look, I think all the games I've seen last week and this week have been a, a little bit sloppy. As I said, <laughs> the, all, the legs seem to be going faster than the, the skills and the hands can actually keep up. But I think uh, that will settle in the, the rest of this game because beautiful conditions out there. Uh, it took a little bit of brilliance from Cameron to really set that, finish off that first quarter. 
Uh, Geelong had a lot of inside 50s. Inside 50s, 16 to 10. They just weren't making the most of it. Hawkins dropped a couple. Uh, they picked out St Kilda defenders on three or four occasions. But it was just that little bit of class from Cameron that, that got them over the line. Saints, it's really obvious what they're trying to do. They're trying to get their numbers back across the half-back line and then use Wangani, Malera and Bonner and Brad Hill pushes back and Henry's been pushing up the ground and then just slingshotting forward and trying to get the ball into a one-on-one contest up there as quickly as they can. They've got the markers down there. So they've got King down there, Cooper Sharma down there, Membry down there. Uh, Philippou goes forward every now and again. So enough players that can take a mark will be really dangerous one-on-one. So they're trying to get the ball to an open forward 50. At the moment, they're going at 60% efficiency inside 50. So they're scoring 60% of the time for the Cats 37. So it's about can they now control the ball through the middle of the ground to get more inside 50s. For the Cats, I think they, they're going to settle. They're going to have a lot of the football. The Saints give you a lot of the footy. They allow you to chip the ball around. Can they finish off that kick inside 50? Nathan Burke with you on ABC Sport. Saints won the clearances 12-7, to 7, but as Burke, you mentioned, the inside 50 is the way of the Cats. 16-10. to 10. Dangerfield with nine, Holmes with nine, and Tom Stewart with seven, while Riley Bonner led the way with nine for the Saints and seven for Henry. Second quarter underway. A chance for Henry racing in from the centre square to try and get a clearance. It's taken, uh, in fact, it was a Geelong free kick, which advantage has been paid. Tanner Bruins back on the field. He gets involved here with a hand pass away to Dempsey. 50 out, kicks towards. Close who rises and takes the mark. Not sure who's exactly the intended target, but he rised on the back of Wangane Miller up comes down with an impressive mark. Interesting, the free kick against Henry in the middle for, for a high fend. Put the forearm up, got the tackler in the head, and uh, as we know now, they've changed the rules slightly with the match review panel, that a high fend, if you do damage, can be classed as an intentional mm. strike. So that one won't, because there was no damage at all, but uh, just need to be very, very careful. Great close for the opening goal. The second quarter comes in and does not miss. 21 goals, 6 last season. And Geelong continue with the momentum just uh, a couple of minutes into this second quarter. The Cats blow their lead out to 10 points. They're 3-3-21 to the Saints, 1-5-11. Grant Sull and Nathan Burke, your experts. Clever the play by Dempsey just to bring the ball back inside and then completely open up uh, the inside 50 for Geelong. And um, benefit of the doubt there, I think that was deliberate kick. He just appeared to spoon that over the top. Uh, 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 centimetre perfect. <laughs> you giving it to him? Yep. yep. Dempsey, uh, he's got the, the blonde hair with the uh, headband and the fluoro pink boots. It's, uh, it's a brave look for a young fella, just sort of paving his way in this <laughs> league. Oh, Gotta get Berkey, the you're showing your age. That's what they all do these days. <laughs> um, fire tosses it up in the middle, but he'll recall it. I don't know. I think you need 100 games before you start with <laughs> no, a bit of personality. That's what we like. No, I'm with you, Berkey. Black boots at all times. <laughs> Ball tossed up in the middle again. Stanley tries to tap it away. Henry running onto it again with his pace. He's held by Holmes. Can just get a kick away. Holmes goes after it again. Hand passes it to Bruin. Back onto the field. Hand passes it away to Dangerfield. Goes on a run. Then puts the ball inside 50 for Geelong. One bounce into the hands of Hawkins. Spins and kicks. Well-timed kick towards Cameron. Takes the mark. He'll have a shot at goal for his second. This time from a set shot 40 metres out. The Saints are getting flogged at the centre bounces. They've only won one so far in this game. The Cats have won both of them so far this quarter, which means that they're starting all of their attack from deep in defence. They haven't had the opportunity to win a centre bounce, get the ball forward. So the Cats are dominating that, that area of the ground. So Jeremy Cameron with 53 goals last year. One already tonight. Slams this one into the left post. Just a minor score for Cameron. Geelong's lead now out to 11 points after three minutes in the second quarter. Wanganee Miller goes short to Wilkie, who gives the hand pass back to Wanganee Miller. Saints out of defence. And a kick to Mason Wood at left half back. Gets the hand pass away to Bonner. Didn't have to break stride. Kicks up towards Henry. Spoiled away by Holmes of the Cats. Wilson's hand pass. Sold. Wanganee Miller into trouble. He's tackled and brought down. And now Paul will board up in front of the two benches. It's run and carry and speed. He's going to worry a lot of sides. It's killed continue to rehearse and practice this mode of play. Thrown up. Marshall tries to win down the tap against uh, Stanley towards the boundary line and Steele can't keep it in play. Rory Campbell on the boundary. 
Injury update, guys. You mentioned Tanner Bruin back out on the field. At quarter time, he was just leaping into the air and seeing how he landed to test out that ankle. Body language hasn't been amazing, but they threw him straight in the middle, and he's obviously out there and into it. Liam Henry, OK after that corky. Sam DeConing had a bit of a tension to his knee, but I think it was just adjusting some strapping. Thanks, Thanks. Rory. The ball's tossed back in towards half forward for the Saints. Here's Henry yet again pointing ahead of him. Wants someone to run faster than him. Has to get a kick away quickly under pressure. Looking for Owens. Out of bounds on the full. Free kick going the way of the Cats in the right back pocket. It'll be Duncan to take it. We've got a new stand but some things don't change. That's the third <laughs> out, out on the full so far this this game. This this Something about the seats in this stadium. It just draws the football into them. So Duncan goes out along the wing. Stanley standing tallest in a pack. Kicks forward towards close. Juggling mark. Just drops it at the very last second. Wangeni Miller with the footy. Dispossessed of it. Bonner can hand pass it away to Steele. Crunched in a tackle. Geelong trying to get the kick away from Dempsey. The umpire will bring it back. Free kick going the way of the St Kilda captain in Jack Steele. He'll take the ball. At left half back for St Kilda. Saints looking to wait, find their way back from an 11-point deficit. Bonner kicks up towards Max King. Can't complete the mark. Owens ran into his own teammate. As Brad crouches a little slow to rise. King's continuing to try and charge his way through. Volley's a kick forward. Cameron back with a flight. So courageous and athletic with Membry coming the other direction. It's a big goal in the first quarter. Jeremy Cameron working across half back there. Goes short to Tom Stewart who has it at right half back. Geelong leading by 11 points into the middle of the ground. Myers takes the mark, releases Tanner Bruin with a hand pass. Kicks long for Oli Henry, he sets himself. Wilkie in from the side, spoils it down. Front and centre, unable to take it cleanly was Mason Wood for the Saints. Wilkie's now over the footy, trying to knock it out. Over the top of him comes Blitzavs and the umpire will ball it up. Just 45 metres out from the Geelong goal. So umpire throws the ball up. Hawkins doing the ruck work again. Bashes it outside of 50. Clark hand pass it away to Bruin, who flicks it across to Myers. Chip kick inside 50. Only person back there was Windhager for the Saints. So Windhager doesn't know whether to go left or go right. And then opts to kick down the broadcast wing. Wrong decision. Duncan back there for Geelong. Easy intercept mark for him to take. From right half back. Duncan just dubs a kick inside 50 towards Cameron Marks in the right forward pocket for Geelong. Always the right option going towards Cameron and now he'll get the trainers and the cameramen to move out of the way so he can take this kick from outside the boundary line. So Cameron steadies himself now from the, for the snap from 45 metres out. Towards goal, touched on the line, no, it's through. Cameron curls it through for another goal, his second of the night. And Geelong extends its lead to 17 points after seven minutes in the second quarter. Poor defensively by the Saints there. It was a slow play. They had plenty of time to get back and, and block the space. Jeremy you know, Cameron started his run from the far pocket. About 30 metres out and just looped around nicely. Um, genuine home ground advantage here, obviously. The, the amount of times Jeremy came from that pocket would have had a, a, a pluck at goal, you know, at the end of training. Um, it's almost his bread and butter. No one really on the line there for the Saints either. It was uh, poor defending all round. First of all, to let Cameron mark it and then to not get a hand on it because it didn't go through very high. Nathan Burke and Brad Sewell, your experts on ABC Sport. Matt Clinch and Lauren Borden calling the action. Rory Campbell down on the boundary. It's been the Jeremy Cameron show in this opening half as he gets the hometown hero's reception. Makes his way to the bench after kicking two goals. Geelong out to the biggest lead of the match, 17 points. Back in the middle, Stanley wins down the tap against Marshall. But it's steal for the Saints. Hand pass to Crouch was taken high. He'll get the free kick. The Saints have taken the advantage. Not sure they heard the whistle initially. Hand pass comes out to Wood. He kicks around the broadcast wing. Bouncing ball for Owens. Tries to beat Stewart. Stewart got him by the back of the jumper and pulled him down. Sweeping in Winhager for the umpire rewarding the tackle. And Tom Stewart, the five-time All-Australian, wins a crucial ball at halfback. He's a hard man to beat. Very bad choice for the Saints to elect to take the advantage. It wasn't really an advantage. 
So Stewart kicks down the wing. Umpire's found a free kick going the way of Paddy Dangerfield. Ball gets tossed back to him by Jack Steele, not directly. Geelong fans want a 50. The umpire will just let Dangerfield take his kick from in front of the St Kilda bench. Spirals a kick inside 50, punched away by Stocker of the Saints. Dempsey might try and keep it in for Geelong. He can't quite do that. And we'll have a throw in 40 metres around from the Geelong goals. It's the home side, 4-4-28, leading St Kilda, 1-5-11. Nine minutes played in the second quarter. Meanwhile at Carrara, 15 minutes gone there in the opening quarter. The opening goal going the way of the Gold Coast Suns through Ben Ainsworth. They're one straight six to Adelaide yet to score. There is an ABC call available. Just look on the ABC Listen out for the AFL Extra button. Tom Hawkins doing the rock work, gets the clearance. Hand pass away on the fly. The shot from uh, Mitch Duncan misses to the right-hand side. And a minor score. Geelong leading by 18 points, doing all the attacking in this second quarter through 10 minutes. Six to one inside 50s again, dominating. Saints are trying to take the game on, but they're just a little bit too sloppy at the moment. Riley Bonner not really sure where to go with that kick in, then goes straight down the line to Stocker. And then Bonner's got to keep running so Stocker can hand pass it away from him. This kick, though, will be chopped off by O'Connor. Hand pass straight to Dempsey. He weaves around his opponent, then kicks for goals. Dempsey goes again, and he's got his second. Dempsey able to get the ball, weave his way through, go for the two sticks, and get the goal. Five on the trot now for Geelong. Their lead goes out to 24 points. 5-5-35 five, five, to 1-5-11. Five, Ten and a half minutes gone in this second quarter. The issue for the Saints for me is that they're, they're trying to run off the half-back line. So every time Bonner runs past, every time Wangani Miller runs past, every time Stocker runs past, they just handball them the ball. But those players who are running past have been told to run past, but they're not looking up the field and going, you know what, I have I've no one to kick it to if you handball the ball to me. And that was a perfect opportunity then, was that Bonner got the footy, looked up, there was no one to kick it to, tried to invent something, came straight back over his head. If you run past wanting the footy, you have to have a glance up the field and know what you're going to do with it once you get it. Nathan Burke with you on ABC Sport. Philippo took a long time to get rid of it, too long, and he's penalised holding the ball. Free kick going the way of Jai Clark in the middle of Cadinia Park. The Cats look to drive it forward once more. Hawkins the target. No reinforcements as Ollie Henry can't get a fly at it. And Stocker takes the intercepting mark for the Saints. Kicks out to Crouch. He marks in the right back pocket. Membry's up on a long lead with a vice-like grip. He takes the mark into the hickey stand. The Saints trying to get some movement and fluency in their ball movement. He has it at right half back. Looks up towards half forward. King sets himself. He's competing against a Koenig and Kolejasny. And Kolejasny takes the mark for the Cats at left half back. Plays on with a hand pass to Mitch Duncan across the half-back line. Goes back inside the defensive 50 and Jack Henry takes the mark. He can move it forward to Atkins. So Atkins mark. Saints still yet to score in this second term. He kicks down towards Myers, who's taken high by Wood. Cats will take the advantage. Hand pass to Holmes, who hand passes it down to Duncan. He kicks inside 50. Wilkie standing at the front. Juggles the mark. 45 metres away from defensive goal. Now whether the Saints can move it out of this defensive half of the ground. They've struggled in this second term so far. Wilkie goes for a long kick towards Mason Wood. He goes up. Jack Henry able to spoil. Wood goes after the footy but happily carries it over the boundary line for a throw in between wing and half forward for Geelong. It's the Cats leading 5-5-35 to St Kilda. 1-5-11, 12 minutes played, second term. It's complete control here by the Cats. Saints have been unable to, to get their hands on the ball and that one mode of play, slingshot off half-back, isn't serving them. Stanley wins down the tap, looking for Tui, can't gather. Dangerfield becomes the tackler on Ross, spins him over as he tries to release the footy. And the umpire will ball it up between wing and half-forward for Geelong on the broadcast side. Marshall and Stanley continue their battle. Beautifully read by Tanner Bruin. Swings on his left-hand side for Geelong. Long kick towards Ollie Henry. It won't reach him. And Stocker takes the mark. At the footy, knocked out of his hands by Hawkins. And that will be a 50-metre penalty. So taken from the top of the defensive goal square in the middle of Cadenia Park. 
No chance for the Saints to try and move it forward with some purpose. Kicks to Marshall. Takes the mark to St Kilda Ruckman. Half pass to Ross to Crouch. Set a challenge here for Winhager. He lost Ooh. the footy and then was collected high. He might get a free kick here against Dangerfield. He got down low and Winhager rather fortunately collected high because he lost the ball. Windhager flat kick inside 50. King hands in the air marks. Well, that was the one, probably the only time this quarter they've managed to get some overlap run through their handballing. Almost mucked it up. Not sure how Big Max King got so free, but haven't had a lot of opportunities inside 50. 1-5 at the moment. Need to take this one. The Saints haven't kicked a goal since the six-minute mark of the first quarter. Max King, good-looking kick through the middle of the two sticks. It's St Kilda's second goal of the night, coming at the 15-minute mark of the second term. The Saints now 2-5-17, trailing Geelong 5-5-35, midway point of this second quarter. Yeah, Max King just managed to find his space by pushing off Stewart, I think it was, and, um, and timing that beautifully. He's deceptively quick, Max King, but the, the 50... Uh, the Saints were awarded deep in their, in their back half, that really quick transition. As Berkey said, it's the first time we've seen that, that run and carry, that link play uh, in this second quarter. And the good thing was that they, they kept the ball through the centre corridor. This is a, a really long ground. And when you start to go wide, it's an extra kick and a half to get the ball inside 50. But the best way to play this ground is through the middle. Saints keep the opening goal of the match, along with the next five consecutive. Last goal of the match through Max King. Back in the middle of the ground. Marshall wins down the tap. Read by Bruin. He can't get a hand pass away as he's tackled and brought to the ground. If I told you, Sully, the Saints haven't had a tackle so far until those two there, would you be surprised by that? Uh, I'll say yes. Thank you. 11-2, to two, the tackling Geelong's way in this second quarter. Also just the fact that the Cats have had so much of the ball. Winhager trying to get a hand pass forward. It's at half forward, though, for Geelong. Closest soccer kick picked off by Winhager. High kick. Marshall back with the flight. Takes the mark on the hickey stand side. He has Higgins in space. He takes the mark between wing and half forward. Has Cooper Sharman on his own. He eventually gets it to him at right half forward. King on the lead. Racing back O'Connor from the other direction. King almost claimed the mark. Bounces into Sam DeConey. DeConey gets the hand pass away, but only as far as Sharman. Hand pass to Burns of the Saints. Kicks to Membry, who marks on his chest in the right forward pocket. Some good desperate defending from Geelong, but eventually the Saints will have the shot on goal. Tim Membry with a chance to try and kick his second here, be it on a tight angle. It's well played by the Saints. They had the overlap, they had the spare number. It looked like Geelong had done enough to clear the ball, but uh, eventually found a little bit of space for Membry to run into. Max Holmes, poor by you. You were standing next to Membry in the square and let him run forward 10 metres to take a chest mark. Tim Membry opens up the angle, curls it superbly. And the Saints are able to put a couple together in quick succession to pull the margin back to 12 points Geelong's way. 5-5-35 to St Kilda, 3-5-23. Tim Membry with his second to join Dempsey and Cameron for the Cats with two goals. Brad Saul and Nathan Burke, your experts on ABC Sport. Today's players, Burkey, they just do those snaps so well, don't they? Yeah. Um, and some are more comfortable, you know, kicking around their bodies. We've seen uh, regularly than what they are running in a straight line. We've seen numerous examples of that tonight. Cameron, a couple, and their memory there as well. They just look so confident to be able to, to kick the ball inside, outside, across their body. Back in the centre here. Cats have still been dominating this area. First opening round match at Cadinia Park in 10 years. It's Geelong leading by two goals, two quick goals from the Saints. As ball's tossed back in, Atkins grabs it, hand passes over the top of his head, goes straight to Marshall, can kick St Kilda deep inside 50. Shum went up, couldn't mark, goes back. Henry chasing after it, doesn't get any support, still goes through there. Geelong jumpers all around him, he's tackled to the ground. The umpire's blowing the whistle, and it'll be holding the ball, free kick going the way of Geelong. It was stiff there, Henry, he got himself into the right spot. It was just uh, overwhelmed with Cats defenders, unfortunately. So Collar Jasney with the footy, kicks out to the hickey wing. Wait, a mark now by Sharman taken out of side, centre wing for the Saints, leading by those 12 points. 
uh, trailings rather by 12 points. Sharman up towards King. He's outnumbered. Stewart gathered it off hands for Geelong. Hand pass away to Atkins. Links up with Zach Guthrie at full stretch. Kicks up towards Dempsey. Almost a one-handed mark on the wing. The ball stayed in play for a moment. And the free kick going against Josh Battle. So Dempsey is sort of out of the contest. But was collected high. So we'll take the free kick under the red chicky stand. The floodlights have taken over here at Cadinia Park. Geelong leading by 12 points. The kick up towards half forward. Through the hands of Battle who couldn't claim the mark. Ollie Dempsey's on off for Geelong. Hand pass to close. One way, then the other. Chips it over the top towards Clark. Flying over the top. Wanganeen Miller takes the mark. It wasn't the best kick into the pocket. Given the small one statured Clark. And they switch it across the half back line. So trying to move the ball quickly here. Steel. Hand passes back to Wilkie. Kicks outside defensive. 50. Marshall goes up. Can't take the mark. Jumps on top of the footy, holding on to it. Geelong fans want ball. Umpire waits for it to come out, which it does. And then it's smothered across the line by Holmes. Off the knee, rather. Oh, no, it will be a throw-in. So he will have a throw-in between wing and half forward for the Cats. It's Geelong leading by 12 points. Nearly 20 minutes played second term. On the Gold Coast, it's the Suns 2-1-13, leading Adelaide one straight six. Jack Steele with the clearance from the ball up, up towards Mitch Owens. Can't juggle the mark. Blitzham slides in for Geelong. Hand pass to Tanner Bruin. Little fumble, but now regathers. Swings on his right hand side. Shanks it as it bounces end over end towards Blitzham. Can't take it cleanly. Has a second go at it. Somehow jams a kick forward into the direction of Dempsey. Can't take the mark. Good support for Josh Battle. The secure defender gathers, clears it out to the wing. Burns is onto it. Stewart comes out, lays the tackle, and escorts him over the boundary line for a throw in. The locals enjoyed that here at Cadinia Park as they lean over their fence and applaud on the hickey stand side. A boundary throw in with Geelong, leading by 12 points. Great running by Stewart. He was covering the kick down the line on one wing. The ball got switched to the other wing, and he was the guy blocking it off. So Royal Marshall's playing without his boot. He was trying to put it back on, and then there was the throw in. He put his hand up with the boot in it to say he was going to contest it. But now play stops because Grime Myers then picked up the boot and threw it out of the area where the ball was going to be tossed into. So we might I don't mind this. So the umpires stop play and said, <laughs> because an opponent is throwing the boot away, we'll allow you to put it back on. I'm not sure we see this too often, though, where play is delayed. <laughs> what it was, was it? Because yeah. he threw it away. Yeah, he threw it away. He's going, hang on, that's not right. He might get a little fine for that, Grime Myers, potentially. It's more rascally than anything else, but it did mean he probably couldn't compete with only one boot. He did put his boot on pretty quickly, Marshall. Now he's ready to contest the throw-in from the ground. It's Clark running after it for the Cats. Can hand pass it away. Bruin runs onto it. Still in the hands of Geelong. Uh, Guthrie can't hold on to it. He'll get the hand pass back from O'Connor, though. Shrugs the tackle. Gets the kick away any way he can into forward 50 for Geelong. But it could be a ball up now, top of the 50. Bonner had the footy for the Saints. He was wrapped up. And now we'll have a ball up 45 metres out from Geelong's goal. Push forward into the hands of Burns. St Kilda, he kicks out wide in the Sharman direction. Bounces out of bounds on the full. The umpire will say no. Just bounce just inside it on the line. So we'll have a ball in centre wing, hickey side of the ground. It's the Cats leading by 12. The voice of Lauren Borden alongside Matt Clinch with you. Rory Campbell down the boundary. Nathan Burke and Brad Sewell, your experts on ABC Sport. Steele gathers for the Saints. Hand pass back to Burns. Gives it to Hill under pressure. Works it to Winhager. Jams it on the boot. Looking for Henry. It lands in his lap rather fortuitously. Turns and kicks inside 50. Memories all on his own. He slides down low at Marks. Henry keeps running. He wants a bat. Tim Memory realise he's got the distance here. Out to the right. 45 metres out from goal. He's kicked a couple already for the Saints tonight. It's only Bradley Hill's second disposal for the game. Given the style of play that you know they're, they're attempting to to roll with the Saints, they'd like to see him with the ball in his hands more often. Geelong kicked the first three goals of this second quarter through ten minutes. The Saints have fought back with the last two. It's been a good response leading in towards half time from the Saints as Tim Membry. out to the right, shooting for his third, close to Stewart, the man on the mark, across the face of goal. King flies, can't take the mark. And offhand, that goes out of play. In fact, it's Mitch Owens who flew in the back. And a boundary throw in the left forward pocket. The Cats led him by 12 points. It's just five possessions for Owens at this point. He's really important, become a really important player for the Saints. So he's one that they can get a big lift out of. Saints trying to get three in a row. 
as Clark grabs the ball, clearing kick for Geelong in the Cameron direction, or Holmes rather, he can't mark. Holmes runs onto it, then hand passes it away to O'Connor, gets himself in some space. Geelong has space, Duncan kicks the ball, long down to half forward. Guthrie's there, stops to pick it up, hand pass back to Myers, he wants to move it quickly, looking for Hawkins. Hawkins playing for the free kick, doesn't matter, Dempsey's in there and takes the mark. Dempsey has been incredibly impressive. In only his, what are we looking at, his seventh, this is his eighth game. He's been composed, decision-making has been very good. Uh, skills have been good and some great courage there as well. What I like is he works hard up and down the ground. He sprints to get to where the ball is, which is a great sign. Is he worthy of the pink boots now if he gets this, <laughs> Becky? Game number eight? <laughs> Don't know. So Dempsey lining up nearly directly in front, 35 metres out, looking for goal number three. Easily done by Dempsey. The youngster with three goals already tonight. Geelong extends that lead back out to 18 points. It's been near the end of the second term, 25 minutes played, getting towards halftime at Cadinia Park, round one action. This is one of your most lairish teammates, Berkey. There is Tim. I said we we didn't really have the, uh, the <laughs> coloured boots back in the day. Um, you know, bleached their hair. Well, I, I was fortunate enough to start my career with the great Trevor Barker. Nice. Uh, it was towards the end of his career, but managed to play three seasons with Trevor. And uh, there was no player I think that uh, sort of encapsulated the 80s better than uh, Trevor Barker with the, the blonde hair and tight shorts great man that he was that he was Holly Dempsey's having a good start to his career as the future no doubt with Tom Hawkins to retire at some stage Dangerfield gets the clearance for Geelong long kick inside 50 here's Hawkins on cue trying to knock it out to Cameron tackled and dispossessed no free kick Myers gets it back to Cameron it might have been he was out of play. A boundary throw in. 60 metres out from the Cats goal. Heading to the player stand in in this second quarter. Geelong leading by 18 points. Winners so far today. The Bombers over the Hawks by 24 points. And GWS by 39 points over North Melbourne. Thrown back in. Stanley wins it down. Stengel's onto it in the left forward pocket. He passes to Hawkins. Voice out. A small forward and key forward combining. And Hawkins just had to leap to receive the pass. He's tight in the left forward pocket, 25 metres out. This is almost dead in front for Tommy Hawkins. He's one of the best round the corner kicks from this distance out that you've ever seen. Seven disposal so far tonight. He steps out, opens up the angle and clips the post on the way through. I just thought you were going to be a Nostradamus there, Berkey. Yeah, Missing Moz in Berkey. To the right-hand side, the right goalpost and a minor score. Geelong by 19 points, closing in on half-time. I'm introducing the intentional Moz. <laughs> <laughs> Wanganeen Miller off the Saints from the kick-in. Goes long. Outside of defensive 50 to a pack out. It'll bounce out for a throw-in. So long kick out, gain plenty of distance for the Saints, but we'll have a throw-in at half-back. For St Kilda. Really crucial now. 27 minutes played. Saints cannot give up another goal. If they can pinch one, well and good, but they cannot let the Cats get another six points ahead. So Clark hand passed away to Crouch. Might have been pushed in the back. Umpire said play on. Holmes with the footy for Geelong. He's tackled. Henry goes in there. Then goes Clark in again for Geelong. Inside 50 towards Stengel. Might have been held by Wilkie. Play goes on. Ball falls to Cameron. In the pocket again. Right boot snap goes across the face for goal. Not a magical goal this time for Jeremy Cameron. Cats lead out to 19 points. A few minutes left in the second quarter. Riley Bonner brings the Saints back in a play. Almost linked up with Mason Wood. Spills off hands and goes out of play under the Reg, Hacky, Reg Hickey wing. Geelong 6 7 43 to the Saints 3 5 23. The Cats with four goals to two in this second quarter, having led by four points at quarter time. Thrown back in. Stanley and Marshall. Stanley wins down the tap to Bruin. 
Hand pass down low for Holmes. Tries to get it back to Bruin. Quick hand pass to Stanley. In the middle of Cadenia Park. Myers one way, then the other. Swings back onto his right. Stengel and Blitzavs almost collide. Stocker goes down awkwardly. Hand pass from Higgins. Straight to Zach Guthrie of Geelong. Stengel's kick partially smothered. No. Sliding in. A good mark taken in the end. Jack Steele working in the defensive 50. And St. Skipper takes the mark. 40 metres out from his defensive goal. Bruin a bit slow to get up as well. He's up as well for Geelong. Steele with the kick to the logo side of the broadcast wing. Bounces once when Stocker takes it. Hand passes it away from King. Got nothing in front of him. Good idea. Put it in front of Henry. He's got to chase it away. 45 metres out from goal. Tries to go with the bend off. Keeps running. Stewart wins that one, but then he tackles Higgins high. Umpire says play on. King. Hand pass to Pilipu. Puts it through the middle. The Saints with one late to keep the margin at 14 points, closing in on half time. It's the visitors, St Kilda, 4 5 29, trailing Geelong, 6 7 43. Not long left until the main break here at Cadinia Park. Well, surely hard to describe that one. It was uh, a slow play coming out of the Saints' half-back line from Steele. But once it got to the wing, it was just uh, off to the races. It wasn't pretty. Max King picked up the footy, put the ball out in front of Henry. It wasn't really to his advantage. Made him stop and wait for it. Higgins worked hard. Thought he might have got one around the neck for a high, but the umpire said, no, no, you're you're playing for that one. But uh, Philippou got on the end of it and a lovely snap. So... Really good effort there by the Saints to just peg back six before the halftime break. Geelong leading by 14 points on the Gold Coast as the Suns by 13 points over the Adelaide Crows. Dangerfield tries to hack a ball off the ground. Can't quite clear the congestion. Brad Crouch has a go. He can't clear it for the Saints. Marshall's hand pass out towards Stocker on the hickey stand wing. Gathers and then looks up towards half forward. Sharman with the arms outstretched in front. Takes the mark in front of Sam De Koning. Kicks up towards Higgins. Is there time for one more? He's got options of plenty out to the right. He spots Mason Wood. 48 metres out. It's a bit closer than that. Maybe 45 once Max Holmes has put on the mark. It's not a pretty reliable shot on goal and a chance here to pull it back to single digits. He didn't seem confident. He was looking around for a pass. The eyes are still darting a little bit. 15 goals, 11 last year for Mason Wood. Produced his best footy last year under Ross Lyon. On a 45-degree angle in the right forward pocket. It's across the face of goal. Sharman flies. Can't come down with a mark, and it's rushed through in the end by Jeremy Cameron. A 13-point lead, Geelong's way at the 31-minute mark of the second quarter. See, that's where Max King, not that smart. He, he led really, really late, but the time the kick goes long... The ball's going over his, his head. He's halfway between the kicker and where it lands. He's the guy that's got to be in the goal square, leaping up for those high balls. So Geelong defenders sharing around in the defensive 50. Stewart to Cameron, out to Duncan, who went back to Stewart and will now get it back from Stewart, crossing back to the left-back pocket now. So happy to just take it slowly, holding on to that 13-point lead nearing half-time. Kick goes out to left half back where Tanner Brewer marks. Aim number 50. Chips it forward to Holmes. Holmes now will go on a bit of a run down that hickey wing. One bounce, now a second bounce. He goes for a third bounce. He won't take a fourth. He'll kick it now deep inside attacking 50 for Geelong. Stanley can't take the mark. Holmes is there as well. Wilkie's back for the Saints. Hand passes it away. It's now Wilson chasing after it. The debutante. And he was paddling it along the boundary line, came off his boot, he's kicked it out of bounds on the full and given Geelong a shot at goal late in the second half. Yeah, it's just the inexperience from the young fella. He was paddling it along, went to kick it for some unknown reason. So O'Connor with the kick, chipped it short too to an unmanned Brian Myers. Which means Myers will have a shot out of this after the siren. He can't do his usual arc here, can he? No. Unless he, he, unless he goes to the left now and then arcs and by the time he kicks it, he's in line. So Grime Myers with Henry on the mark. Runs straight, slight arc. Doesn't work for him. Kicks it out of bounds on the full. So in the end, there'll be no score from that. 
The halftime score will be Geelong 6 7 43, leading St Kilda 4 6 30. Geelong with the first three goals of that second term, and then St Kilda managing to fight back with three of the last four. So, goal kickers for tonight. It's three goals for young Oliver Dempsey, two to Jeremy Cameron and one to Brad, Brad Close. Well, for St Kilda, it's a couple to Tim Membry, one to Philippou and one to Max King as well. Lauren Borden and Matt Clinch calling the action. Rory Campbell down the boundary. Nathan Burke and Brad Sewell are your experts. Ollie Dempsey only had a couple of goals coming into tonight. He has a career best three goals, including two in that second quarter. And Geelong... Hold a 13-point advantage at the main break. The thoughts of Brad Sewell and Nathan Burke with you on ABC Sport. Becky, it was an entertaining second quarter. Geelong just completely dominated. You know, 80% of, uh, of the minutes there. The game was played in their half. They had a lot of opportunity. Inside 50s thus far are 20 to 9. Um, and it looks like St Kilda have only got one avenue to goal, and that is a quick slingshot. They're incredibly dangerous when the ball gets out the back, and that was the Philippou goal, I think we saw the snap, when the ball got over the back of the contest. Um, a really clever piece of play by King, not to blaze away. Vaguely kick it in the direction of Henry running back towards goal, and they managed to scramble and create. But for the most part, it was all along that quarter. Um, uh, Dangerfield found some ball, uh, Cameron, was his work ethic is just extraordinary. His ability to get up the ground and, and assist in Geelong's defensive 50. And, um, and Hawkins managed to get a little bit of the ball in, in his quarter as well. Um, been really impressed with Dempsey. Um, just composed for a young player. Uh, he's looked fantastic. Yeah, he's kicked three. If he kicks six, I reckon he earns those boots. A little, little bit of way to go, but he's on track at the halfway You're a tough point. Part. Taskmaster, aren't you? <laughs> Halfway point, he's, he's on track, so he's doing extremely well. Inside 50s for the match so far, 36 to the Cats, 19 to the Saints. Really, the only thing they're keeping the Saints in this game is that they've scored from 11 times, or 11 scoring shots, from 19 inside 50s and going at 57%, which is pretty high, where the Cats are 15 from 36. The worry for me for the Saints is that they've got plan A, and when plan A works and they can run and overlap and share the ball quickly through the middle, get the ball inside 50 quickly, then that looks really dangerous. But when they're not allowed to do that, plan B isn't there. I don't really know what plan B is. And they're, they're trying to force plan A by running past the really odd times, giving the ball to people running past who don't, haven't really looked up the field to see what's on offer up the field. You always need to look up just as you're running past, just so you've got an idea what you need to do with it, do with it if you have to get rid of, rid of the ball quickly. And they're causing some issues. To me, it looks like a team who have tried to instill a, a new game plan. They've got some newfound leg speed through the draft and getting some new players in, and we're going, OK, we're going to use this leg speed. Let's play this certain way. But uh, in when you're playing against yourself at training, it looks great. When you're playing sort of practice matches and match sims, it looks great. When you come down to Geelong in, in the real thing, um, it just shows that they haven't quite nailed it yet. It's not quite embedded in how they want to play. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what they do at halftime, whether Ross Lyon says, OK, let's be a little bit more circumspect with that run-and-gun style, or no, this is the way we're going to get ourselves back into the ground at the end of the game. We just need to do it better. For me, the Cats are having a lot of inside 50s. They just need to be, be a bit more efficient going inside 50 and stop kicking the ball to the Saints as often as what they are. Earlier today, Essendon defeated Hawthorne by 24 points at the MCG in front of 73,000, while the Giants were 39-point winners over North Melbourne, 17-19, 121 to the Roos, 13-4-82. Jesse Hogan got the three votes in the ABC Football of the Year from his six goals, 10 goals in the opening two rounds. Meanwhile, on the Gold Coast, it's the Suns 3-2-20, leading the Adelaide Crows 1-1-7. There is an ABC call of that match available if you're looking for it. Just download the ABC Listen app and click on the AFL Extra button. Halftime here at Cadenia Park. It's the Cats who lead by 13 points. Let's get the latest from the ABC Newsroom. Hello, this is ABC News with David Rollins. Tropical cyclone Megan has formed in the Gulf of Carpentaria, bringing drenching rain to coastal communities in the Northern Territory. Robert Baird has the latest. 
The Weather Bureau says the system reached Category 1 intensity mid this afternoon after drifting east over the remote Arnhem Land coast yesterday. The system has already dropped 460 millimetres of rain in the last 24 hours over Groot Island, bringing transport to a standstill. Yesterday, the system left crews scrambling to restore power in communities like Galawinku, and many residents say they're still disconnected. The Bureau predicts Cyclone Megan will move south over the next two days, strengthening to a Category 3 system before crossing the coast near the town of Borolula sometime on Monday. Polls have closed in Queensland's local government elections. As of five o'clock this afternoon local time, more than 1.8 million Queenslanders have cast their ballots for the councillors and mayors who make up the state's 77 local governments. Just over 1 million people pre-polled. Housing affordability, crime and the rising cost of living have been dominant issues in most council campaigns. In Brisbane, Australia's largest local government authority, LNP Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner is being challenged by Labor's Tracy Price and the Greens' Jonathan Sri Ranganathan. Meantime, vote counting is underway for dual Queensland state by-elections in Inala and Ipswich West. Both are considered safe Labor seats. Inala was held by former Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, who retired late last year. Israel says it will proceed with its planned offensive against Hamas forces in Rafah in southern Gaza, despite international concerns about the danger to Palestinian civilians taking refuge there. Larry Buttrose reports. The United Nations Secretary-General Antonio Guterres is warning the offensive will be a humanitarian disaster. The Israeli military is preparing for the evacuation of the nearly one and a half million civilians sheltering in the area, but hasn't given a time frame. In Washington, White House National Security spokesperson John Kirby says the US has not seen Israel's plan for its rougher offensive, but would like to. The Israeli leadership is also trying to keep ceasefire hopes alive with plans to send another delegation to Qatar for talks on a possible hostage deal with Hamas. Officials in Russia say two people are being killed and an oil facility satellite following two separate Ukrainian missile strikes as voting continues in Russia's three-day presidential election. A Russian regional governor says two people were killed and three injured in a Ukrainian missile strike on the border city of Belgorod. And the governor of Samara region in southern Russia says that Ukrainian drones have struck two oil refineries there, setting one on fire but not inflicting any casualties. Violence is continuing in parts of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, following the resignation of Prime Minister Ariel Henry earlier this week. There are reports of roadblocks and burning tyres on the streets of some neighbourhoods in the city of three million people. Mr Henry says he'll leave office when a new transitional council drawn from different political coalitions and social sectors is ready to take over. The US says most members of the council have now been nominated. Back home in the federal government has hired an extra 46 lawyers as it seeks to re-detain some of the former immigration detainees released after last year's landmark High Court ruling. Last November, the court ruled the indefinite detention of people who could not be deported was unlawful, leading to the release of 149 people. That cohort included convicted murderers, rapists and kidnappers, with the government vowing to re-detain those people under a new preventative regime. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese says community safety remains the government's priority. One of the things that we are doing, of course, is to get appropriate legal advice uh, so that we can make appropriate submissions uh, when court cases are brought. Turning to sport, and North Queensland has escaped with a golden point win over Newcastle in the National Rugby League. Chad Townsend kicked a field goal in the second minute of overtime to give the Cowboys a 21-20 victory. The home team had recovered from being 12 nil down at half-time to level the game up in the shadows of full-time. The Cowboys' comeback gives them two wins from as many starts in 2024, while the Knights remain winless. Canberra also boasts a perfect record two weeks into the competition after accounting for the West Tigers 32-12 in Saturday's opening game. And an AFL, GWS has beaten North Melbourne 121-82. ABC News. It's the most magical time of the year, right? Footy season. This season, you can get your footy live and ad-free on the ABC Listen app. Unbelievable. AFL, NRL, men's, women's. Whatever you fix, we've got you covered. Every goal, try, mark and tackle. Called by ABC Sports expert commentary team. A wonderful goal. Game, set, bingo. 
100% pure footy, live and ad-free on the ABC Listen app. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. With the long free kick, which advantage has been paid. Tanner Bruins back on the field. He gets involved here with a hand pass away to Dempsey. 50 out, kicks towards Close, who rises and takes the mark. Brad Close for the opening goal. The second quarter comes in and does not miss. Duncan just dubs a kick inside 50 towards Cameron Marks in the right forward pocket for Geelong. Steadies himself now from the, for the snap. From 45 metres out towards goal. Touched on the line. No, it's through. Cameron curls it through for another goal. His second of the night. God has got to keep running so Stocker can hand pass it away from him. This kick, though, will be chopped off by O'Connor. Hand pass straight to Dempsey. He weaves around his opponent, then kicks for goals. Dempsey goes again, and he's got his second. Windhager, flat kick inside 50. King hands in the air marks. Well, that was the one, probably the only time this quarter that managed to get some overlap run. Saints haven't kicked a goal since the six-minute mark of the first quarter. That's King, good-looking kick through the middle of the two sticks. The Tony gets the hand pass away, but only as far as Sharman. Hand pass to Burns of the Saints. Kicks to Membry, who marks on his chest in the right forward pocket. Tim Membry opens up the angle, curls it superbly. And the Saints are able to put a couple together in quick succession. Hand pass back to Myers. He wants to move it quickly. Looking for Hawkins. Hawkins playing for the free kick. Doesn't matter. Dempsey's in there and takes the mark. Dempsey has been incredibly impressive. He's been composed. Decision making has been very good. So Dempsey lining up nearly directly in front. 35 metres out. Looking for goal number three. Easily done by Dempsey. The youngster with three goals already tonight. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Half time at Cadinia Park, and it's Geelong who hold a slim lead, a 13 point advantage at the main break. 6 7 43 to the Saints, 4 6 30 in the first match in the newly renovated Cadinia Park. The Joel Selwood stand is completed. 14,000 and standing room in that stand, around 40,000 in total. Matt Clinch and Lauren Borden calling the action on ABC Sport. Nathan Burke and Brad Sewell are your experts with Rory Campbell down on the boundary. Ollie Dempsey has multiple goals for the first time in an AFL match. He's kicked three, including two in that second quarter. Jeremy Cameron with a couple as well, while Brad Close is the other individual goal kicker for the Cats. Meanwhile, for the Saints, two goals to Tim Membry, individuals to Filippo and to King. Earlier today, it was the Bombers who prevailed by 24 points over the Hawks at the MCG in front of 73,000. Jay Stringer booted four goals, Kyle Langford with three, while Dylan Moore was the best for the Hawks with three. 17 15 107 to the Hawks 11 7 73. There were eight lead changes midway throughout the match, but five goals to two in the final term. Wrestled momentum the Bombers' way. Archie Perkins got the three votes in the ABC Footballer of the Year. While the Giants were too strong for North Melbourne 17 19 121 to the Roos 13 4 82. So Jesse Hogan with six goals in the match, set so 10 games in his last two outings to get the three votes in the ABC Footballer of the Year. In Josh Kelly's 200th match, the disappointing news from a North Melbourne point of view was what looked to be a serious Achilles injury to Josh Gota. So uh, fingers crossed for him. The other news uh, floating around today was that Angus Brayshaw is set to return to Melbourne in a new coaching role after medically retiring from the AFL. So a fan favourite amongst his teammates, but uh, reports through that uh, he is set to be paid the remaining money on his contract. So uh, maybe a bit of the speculation Put to one side now it has been confirmed he will return to the club in a off-field role in the national rugby league tonight don't forget coverage is available on the abc listen app just look for the designated button tonight the melbourne storm taking on the warriors and it's the storm who lead 18 points to 10 through 48 minutes at amy park while earlier today it was the north queensland cowboys who had a, a narrow win over the newcastle knights 21 to 20 and the canberra raiders proved too strong for the west tigers 32 to 12. The other exciting news you might have heard in some of the promos we're running is that ABC Sport we will be broadcasting the two World Cup qualifiers between Australia and Lebanon starting next Thursday night. So uh, 
National Football on your radio. The ABC Listen app is the place to find it. Thursday the 21st of March in Sydney we kick off from 8pm and on Tuesday the 26th of March from Canberra. So Ned Hall and Paul Wade will be the commentary team there. So uh, keep an ear out for that. The uh, World Cup qualifiers between Australia and Lebanon. You'll be able to hear them all on the ABC Listen app. Brad Saul and Nathan Burke, I mean, from a Geelong point of view, it's sort of gone according to plan. Um, I guess the broader question I'd have for you, Sully, is do you see the Cats sort of firing their way back up the ladder? Where do you see this Geelong lineup under Chris Scott? Just the second time last year they've missed finals under his tenure, but um, the question is, I guess, with eight players over the age of 30, do they still have enough class to be able to challenge the absolute best sides? I think they've got enough. I, th- I think they have enough class, but when, you, when you're that top-heavy... It just feels like the weight is against you a little bit. Um, and, and then further to that point, when, 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 when things do roll over, those eight will, um, will kind of shuffle through pretty quickly. And then there's a lot of experience that, uh, that leaves that side. So um, I, I, don't, I, don't think they'll, I don't think they'll play finals. I don't think they'll scrape into the eight. Uh, but that being said, it's really difficult to, to write off a team with... Still Dangerfield and, and Cameron, um, Hawkins to a lesser extent, um, but they're slowly starting to, to blood some some young guys uh, into the side, and and that'll certainly be exciting for them. They've got the Adelaide Crows at the Adelaide Oval next week, Berkey, so uh, that'll be a good challenge if they're able to go on and win tonight. The Hawks and the Western Bulldogs in the next couple of weeks to come, so uh, they need their, their stars to be fit. Though, don't they? They're, they're missing um, Cameron Guthrie for the first uh, six to eight weeks of the season, so uh, they're going to be so reliant on the, the health and well-being of Jeremy Cameron, Patrick Dangerfield, Tom Hawkins, who's been quiet tonight, and, and probably Tom Stewart, who's arguably their best player now. Those eight over 30, they've all had success. They've all got flags under their belt. And uh, whilst they're up there sort of vying for finals, they'll be great. But if they drop off and lose three or four and start sliding down the ladder, that's when it becomes really hard for that eight to really maintain that enthusiasm, to drag the young guys through, and um, you need exceptional characters to do that, which I know they're all great characters, but it, it gets really hard. The end is in sight. You've got success under your belt. I reckon that's probably why they went from 1st to 12th in the space of one season last year. Uh, they're back now. Everything's fresh. They'll be 12th again if they don't have a great first third of the season. If they have a great first third of the season, well, then I reckon that's when they could be buying for the eight. They do have some young kids who are trying to carve their way out with uh, Tanner Bruin alongside uh, Jai Clark. We're going to see Shannon Neal throughout the season, Austin Mullen and, um, yeah, some of the others who are trying to force their way in. What about the Saints, Berkey? I mean, obviously, first season under Ross Lyon last year, they were able to play in finals, lost in an elimination final to GWS. Um, with the talent on their list and the young kids, do you see they, they should be a top eight side? Uh, with a bit of luck, they will be. They're, they're not a top eight side based purely on talent. Um, they have to win close games. They're, they're in a bit of a transition period. At the moment, you've got Steele, Crouch and Ross as your three main midfielders. They're not going to be the ones to carry you forward. The only problem is right here, right now, the young fellas aren't... Then they're not good enough to push those guys out of the middle. So what they're going to do, they might play two of them. They'll play Ross and Steele and a Philippou in the middle. Uh, or they might have a, a Ross and a Crouch and a Henry will go, come through the middle. Over the next couple of years, those young blokes will push those older blokes out and that is when they'll be vying for sort of top four stuff. Not quite at the moment. They need to change that midfield mix and get a bit more pace and a bit, bit more dynamism through there um, before they're actually a, a real contender. Yeah, you wonder whether they might need to run a Filippo or maybe even a Mitch Owens from time to time just to try and bring in a point of difference. And yep. What have you made of Liam Henry's start as a Saint? Hasn't had a lot of the footy. Trying no, to be creative and break the lines. Yeah, he's been good, though. He's, he's working really hard. He's getting up to the half-back line, a lot of around the middle. He's been unlucky uh, a couple of times. He's got his hands on the ball inside forward 50, just been swamped by defenders. So it's a good start, though. Dangerfield with 14, Holmes with 14, Tom Stewart with 12, while Steele with 16 for the Saints, 15 for Bonner, and 13 for Wanganee Miller. Into the second half we go with Lauren Borden. 
So Geelong leading by 13 points. Dangerfield running straight through the midfield. Can get a hand pass away. Bruin trying to collect. Winhager does well to pull it out. Can't get the kick away. Fresh air. He goes back after it. Play is all surrounding the footy. Brad Close wants a free kick. The umpire will go just outside the centre square and ball it up. Kiki stands side of the ground. Tosses it up. And it'll be a holding free from the ruck going the way of Rowan Marshall for the Saints. So Marshall will kick the Saints to half forward. High ball up, waiting for a mark. At the oh. back was King. Sitting at the back, able to juggle the mark and take it on his chest. Read it perfectly. And King will have the first shot of the second half. What was confusion? The umpire inside 50 paid like a, a hold. And uh, I think it was very, very early on in the contest, but it ended up being a Max King mark anyway. So I think the, the right result ended up anyway. So Max King just stayed at the back of the, the pack in that and was able to hold on to it. He's already got one tonight. This one kicking from 45 metres out. It's offline to the left and never swings back. So a minor score for the Saints to start the second half tonight. A minute played, and it's Geelong leading by 12 points. Zach Guthrie brings Geelong back into play. Kicks into the back pocket where the mark is taken by Mitch Duncan. Duncan looking for options on the interchange side of the ground. Puts it up towards Stanley, who tries to fly. Ron Marshall couldn't hang on to the mark. At the back, battle gathers, blazes away inside 50. Duncan was still well set. The loose inside the defensive 50 for Geelong. And marks and switches play. Sam DeConing in the right back pocket. Works it up to the speeds to Holmes. He runs the hickey stand wing. Tries to put it out in front of Blitzhouse. What a pass. Didn't have to break stride. He's at right half forward. Hawkins wants it into the pocket. He goes deeper than that. Cameron's a target. Here comes Ollie Henry. Can't hang on to the mark. Crash the pack and there's a boot that's gone in the process as well. The Saints lock it in through Stocker. It's his boot. And a throw up in the right forward pocket for the Cats. Now if the umpire's right, he'll wait for him to put his boot on as well. He's tied his shoes up quickly. So the umpire will quickly restart play by tossing it up. Dangerfield this time. Hand passes along the ground. Atkins can pick up. Hand pass across to Bruin. He'll have a shot at the sticks. It's out wide. Stengel chase after it. But it'll bounce just over the boundary line for a throw in. Two or three metres around from the left behind post. Real advantage for the Cats is Hawkins does the rucking inside 50, allowing Stanley to just create that wall. An extra player about 70 metres out from goal. It's hard to get past. So ball comes in, Atkins tries to take it out of the air, can't. Stengel hand passes it away. Philippou might have been held on there, he was. So Duncan held on to Mateus Philippou, and the umpire saw it. And the young Saint will get the free kick at right halfback for St Kilda. Philippou called to play on. Veers out to the left, drives it up towards Membry, and Owens! Oh, oh, oh. Massive fly, he juggles it, surely pay them up. Oh. Come on, umpire. Gary Ablett didn't hold it that long. Hand pass away to Burns. Hard against the boundary line. An early contender for Mark of the Year. Not paid. Up towards uh, Marshall, who spoils it down. Geelong have the numbers. Onto it, Myers. Chips the ball out in front of Duncan. Great composure under pressure. At centre-half back, Mitch Duncan. Kicks it back out to the broadcast side. There's two cats in Holmes and O'Connor. Holmes takes the mark. Into the pocket, looking for Dangerfield. It clears him. Hawkins almost took the mark. Got rid of Cordy. Great work defensively by Burns. Gets the half pass away to Cordy. Turns it straight over. Gets to Holmes of the Cats, who takes the mark. Holmes chops it off. Decides to go long instead of taking a short option. Goes to the back of the pack. Hawkins is there in the goal square. Can't get boot to bowl. It was Mason Wood on the last line of defence for the Saints, making sure Hawkins wouldn't be able to put it through for a goal. So minor score for the Cats. They now lead by 13 points, opening stages of the third term. Hawkins has almost had a good game thus far. He's had a number of opportunities where the ball's just bobbled out of his hands in dangerous positions in the forward 50. Cal Wilkie receives it from the secure kick in to Mason Wood, who marks it left half back up to the wing. Not a great kick. And then the mark was dropped by the Cats and a chance for Filippo. Gets the hand pass over his shoulder. Mark O'Connor works his way back for Geelong. Hand pass to Cameron who bounces into Filippo. Gets the hand pass to Stewart. Kicks up towards half forward. Curdy, Cordy slides in front of Stengel. And gets a hand onto it to spoil it out of play. The throw in at right half forward for Geelong. They're 6 8 44 to the Saints 4 7 31. Five minutes gone in the third term. 13 points ahead, but you think it could just be a bit more for Geelong. 
given how they've carried this game so far. Ball tossed back in, Dangerfield chasing after it, gets some space on Henry, kicks the ball inside 50 towards Hawkins again. He's at the back, could have been tripped, fell over, might have been playing for the free. And the umpire will just pay the rush behind. So we'll get another rush behind for the Cats, margin back out to 14 points. Bonner quickly back into play. Henry the target getting back. Dangerfield makes the spoil. Gathers the loose footy. Hand pass too sharp for O'Connor. Has to go back and regather it. Hand pass to Dangerfield. Middle of Caninia Park. High ball looking for Stengel. Gets rid of Wanganee Miller and takes the chest mark. Crafty work from the small forward. And he'll line up on a 45 degree angle. Kicking from around 40 metres out. Terrific body work by Stengel. Just a genuine one-on-one marking contest. Clever play. That's where you'd hope the ball was in the air for a fair amount of time. There'd be a, a third Saints player would come into that contest and, and kill it and not and allow the, the smallest guy inside 50 to take the mark. 27 goals last year. Yet to kick one tonight for Tyson Stengel. Comes in on the right-hand side. It's across the face of goal and cannons into the left goalpost. So three behinds to start this third term. Geelong winning by 15 points. Langadine Miller are looking to get the Saints away from defence and go quickly. Risky kick to the top of the 50 towards Steele. Couldn't mark but can regather and hand pass away to Stocker. Kicks down the hickey wing out of bounds by about two metres. And Geelong will get the free kick right at centre wing. Stewart holding the footy in front of predominantly Geelong crowd. Barely any Saint supporters here as he kicks it into O'Connor, who hand passes back to him. Stewart just chips it forward to Colin Jasney. Hand passes it to O'Connor, still running down that hickey wing. Smother coming from Wilson. Colin Jasney recovers. Hand pass to Atkins. Plenty of pressure coming here from the Saints, and eventually they'll get it over the line. Both clubs will be able to reset as we have a throw in at centre wing. Geelong by 15 in this third quarter. Lauren Borden behind the mic tonight alongside Matt Clinch, Nathan Burke and Brad Sewell. Rory Campbell down on the boundary. Halftime on the Gold Coast and it's been the Suns of almost halftime. 4-4-28 to Adelaide 1-2-8. In the middle of the ground, a chance of the Saints here as Seb Ross kicks the bouncing ball end over end. Looking for Mitch Owens. Clever little toe poke from Stewart from Geelong out towards the boundary line. Unable to keep it in play. Miles Burns as he's got a little strategic shove over the boundary line by Zach Tui. The Irishman, one of eight players over the age of 30 for the Cats. 34 years of age with a one-year contract extension. Surpassed the record of Jim Steins for the most games by an Irishman. Roland Marshall wins down the tap for the Saints, but Seb Ross can't keep it in play. So I feel like surely maybe Roland Marshall could go to another level. It feels like he's often in the conversation with Tim English and Max Gorn. Paul Australian Ruckman. Physically, he seems to have those attributes. Um, it's a matter of whether he's prepared to take that next step, next step himself. So the tap out comes to steal. He kicks towards King, who couldn't mark on the paint of 50. De Koning was there for Geelong. King recovers, can kick towards goal, top of the goal square. Membry paddles it down to Wilson. He puts through his first goal in AFL. It was a quick finish there from the youngster. And he's able to get his first goal in the big time. Wangaratta now to Geelong at Cadinia Park. And he gets goal number one. Importantly, he puts the Saints back within nine points. St Kilda 5-7-37, Geelong 6-10-46. Nine minutes gone in the third term. Yeah, well done to the young man. It's pick 18 in uh, last year's draft. Had a couple of shaky moments in that first half. A couple of bad decisions, kicking the ball out from off the ground. But so far in this second half, he's laid a, a wonderful smother on that outer side over there. A couple of good tackles. This gets himself beautiful front and centre. Snaps on the left boot. And uh, well done, young man. He'll never, ever forget that kick. His first goal in AFL football. Remember your first goal, Berkey? No. Nah. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I've got You'll one never in my forget it. I've got one in my mind that I think is my first goal, but it might not be, but it's what I think it might be. When you play over three hundred games, they do all tend to blur into the backdrop. Oh, kick so many goals, man. <laughs> they all blur and 
Nathan Burke and Brad Saw with you. Roll Marshall gets a free kick in the middle of the ground. The Saints are surging. Long kick towards Membry. Can't take the mark. Mitch Owens just couldn't pick it up cleanly. Throws the arms back, wanting a free kick. Wilson tries to knock it out, but it's Cole Jazzy for the Cats. Hand past the Clark. Almost too slow. Just got his kick away in the nick of time. Stocker gathers 60 from home for the Saints. Long towards Owens. Clears to the back. Membry oh. gathers. Just can't get it back in through the major opening. Slams it into the right goalpost. Didn't have a lot of room to move as he followed it onto the boot. The Saints are making a run here. They trail by eight points. 11 minutes gone, third term on ABC Sport. Stewart holding the footy in the goal square. Kicks in the right back pocket. Very fine to Coning. Surprised me the margin is only eight, given the dominance of long second quarter. I think what we've seen in the last five minutes is, is Saints actually getting their defensive efforts, which is what they were known for last year, which is probably what got them into the finals. It wasn't their attacking efforts. In the first half, they really concentrated on their attack and their defence was poor. If I'm Ross Lyon, I'm saying, guys, let's get back to the way that we defend. I didn't see it in the first five minutes of this quarter, but it's sort of back together a little bit now and they're getting repeat in entries inside 50. The Geelong chant trying to boost the home side as the ball's tossed in centre wing. Clark's there for the Cats. He can't gather it cleanly. Allows St Kilda a chance to get the ball away. Windhager kicks it up. Ross chooses to punch it. Marshall's on the end of it and just gets the kick inside 50 any way he can. Comes back out to Owens. Hand pass to Henry. He'll kick from 50 and he'll get it through. Oh, he hit the post maybe. Oh, does it just shaved the right goal post? Oh, I reckon it's hit the post. So we'll have a score review. Ed Longer than he realised, Henry. He could have straightened up and, and taken some more ground. Kicked it flat towards the goal. It does look like it deviates from the right goal post. That will probably be the decision that the umpire goes with. Geelong setting up for a kick in. So... Just centimetres away from a goal, Liam Henry. That shaved the post. Which means Geelong now ahead by seven points. The better defence there from the Saints. It's the first time in this game they've had repeat forward 50 entries. Stewart in the two. Back to Tom Stewart. Kicks up to the hickey wing for Geelong. Atkins gathers off hands, gets a hand pass to Tanner Brewer and back to Atkins. Hand pass away to Holmes, kicks over the head of Clark, opens the door for the Saints. Burns gathers, beautiful sidestep, kicks up towards Higgins, spoiled away from him by Stewart. At the back of the pack, Filippo gathers in the right fall pocket. In fact, it's Wilson, he blazes away. And Darcy Wilson having kicked his first goal on debut. That wasn't as good. Out to the right and out of bounds on the full. Geelong leading by seven points. The Saints are mounting a surge. His eyes lit up there for number two. <laughs> Had a couple of other options to take, but uh, you live by the sword, die by the sword. Have a crack, young fella. Cam Guthrie kicks across the pocket to the right back pocket to DeConing, who chipped forward to Atkins. He'll go in the Dempsey direction. It'll be close to the boundary line, and it will go out for a boundary throw-in. It's Geelong leading by seven points. Let's head down to Rory Campbell on the boundary. Yeah, guys, Lance Collard's just started doing some run-throughs on the boundary line and starting to do a few kicking exercises. This is the first time I've seen him move apart from at quarter time all evening. So maybe the Saints looking to, to make a move with the substitute sometime soon. Thanks, Rory. The Western Australian picked 28 last year. Alongside Sean Manor on the boot, the sub tonight. Wanganay Miller for the Saints, gets a kick up towards half forward, awkward bouncing ball for Higgins, he gathers it though for the Saints, hand pass missed Henry, 65 metres out from goal, hand pass to Wood, gets the hand pass to Crouch, back to Henry, chips it into the pocket, almost the juggling mark to Higgins, Collar Jassy just got a touch onto it, Zach Guthrie tries to charge his way through, gets the hand pass to Tui, hand pass away to Blitzhouse, kicks up to the wing, Cooper Sharman flies, he can't take the mark. After a little shove from Ollie Dempsey, and it goes out of play for a throw in. Centre of the Hickey Stand wing. It's Geelong. They lead by seven points, 14 minutes gone, third term. And big momentum shifts in this game so far. Saints, whilst they have the momentum now, they need to hit the scoreboard. Jack Higgins, you, you've got to mark those. It's almost, he just made it more difficult than it needed to be. So it's Owens now who's gone in the ruck for the Saints. Ball falls in the ground, and it's Blitzarves who takes it for Geelong. Gets it across to Clark, who puts it on his boot, puts it in front of Dempsey at right half forward for the Saints. Ball will be close to the boundary line. And it's the Saints who can get it away from their defensive half towards Henry again. They've gone to him plenty of times tonight. Blitzarves was there. He tried to gather it. 
Sates going in there. Owens was in there. Ball gets back to Brad Hill. Low kick inside 50. It was a rush kick. And it was Cole Jasney who took the mark. He kicks out into the centre square. Wanganeen Miller couldn't take the mark, but slowed down the Cats on their run forward. Bruin now straight through the centre square. He'll opt to go out wide where he finds Paddy Dangerfield who'll slow things down a little. Geelong by seven points. The Saints with the last seven inside 50s. They lead in this quarter. The inside 50 count, 10 to 5, despite the Cats still leading on the scoreboard. Kick from two into the middle of the ground, unleashes Zach Guthrie looking into the pocket for Ollie Henry. Can't take the mark. O'Connor front and centre. Hand pass to Cameron around his body. He misses to the left hand side. A couple of goals for Jeremy Cameron, but couldn't quite finish there. It's Geelong. Hold an eight-point advantage at the 16-minute mark of the third term. I'll be looking to get Collard on and Jack Higgins off, letting his man run down the field and kick the ball inside 50, trailing 15 metres behind, still shaking his head over a drop mark inside 50. Get the young fella Collard on. He's a goal kicker. He's lively. Get him up forward. So Burns now kicks down the wing. Ross trying to chase after it. Little kick from Duncan can find its way to Jack Henry. He hand passes in front of uh, Blitzars, who then hand passes towards O'Connor Hill. Runs in front of O'Connor and forces the ball out of bounds for a throw in, half forward for the Cats. So both subs, Lance Collard and Sean Manor for Geelong, still unactivated at the moment. The umpire throws the ball in. Louis Blitzars just pulls it out and then puts Geelong inside 50. A mark taken there by none other than Dempsey. He's having a stellar night and he picked this one off as well in a pack. And now we'll have a shot from almost directly in front, 35 metres out. He's going for his fourth. Yeah, a couple of brain fades. It was Marshall in the ruck. Just let his opponent, Blitzarves, get the front position, take the ball, kick the ball forward. And Cooper Sharman had good position, but swiped at the footy and just missed it. So Dempsey had only kicked two goals before tonight in his eight games. Oh. He hits it into the goalpost, doesn't get his fourth four tonight. It's Geelong's advantage now out to nine points as we head down to Rory Campbell on the boundary. Lance Collard has just come on. He's running uh, across the ground as we speak, so the Saints have activated their substitute. I'll keep you up to date as to who they've uh, taken off in the place of Collard. Thanks, Rory. It might be Seb Ross, who's at the moment off the field. It's the kick trying to find Zach Tui goes out of play from Mitch Duncan, and the umpire will throw it in. Right half forward for the Cats. They lead by nine points. Got the famous number four for the Saints. And Tony Lockett could eat him for breakfast, to be totally <laughs> honest. He's not that big, but uh, it's a big number to carry. It's not as big himself. Plugger is what he used to be back in his playing days. True. Steel can't bust his way through as Blitzavs lays the tackle. Of course, we have the annual Spuds match next week for Collingwood and St Kilda. And the number two, of course, Marcus Winhager wearing this season. In tribute to Danny Frawley from the throw-up. Clark trying to bust his way through. Tries to knock it out. It spills the way on Burns of the Saints. Kicks an up and under kick. Underneath that is Filippo. O'Connor the other direction. Didn't go 15 metres. It's knocked down towards Tom Atkins. The tough cat can't break through. And the umpire will ball it up. Still between wing and half forward for Geelong. The Cats leading by nine points. 18 minutes gone. Third term. 6-12-48 to the Saints. 5-9-39. Three the legs of Jack Steele. Atkins just soccers it forward. Gets some distance on the kick but it'll go out of bounds. 35 metres around from the Cats' goal. So another opportunity now here for Geelong. Haven't kicked a goal in this third term, kicking towards the new Joel Selwood stand end at Cadinia Park. So umpire gets set to toss the ball in. It'll be tossed in about 40 metres out from the Cats' goal. Hawkins palms it behind him. Atkins runs onto it again. Hand pass to O'Connor just outside the 50. He kicks towards Dempsey, runs onto it and marks. Dempsey has been everywhere tonight. He's on the end of another mark and gets another chance at a goal. This one, his most difficult shot of the night. Just a metre or so in from the boundary line, kicking from about 35 metres out. They need to do something about him. Uh, they've got Cooper Sharman on at the moment. So Cooper's a half part-time defender, part-time forward. 
and uh, he's just getting led to the ball at the moment. I'd be looking at someone like a stocker giving away height but can actually defend one-on-one. Oliver Dempsey in his bright pink boots kicks towards the goals. It's right across the face of it, so no score. And it'll be a throw-in a couple of metres around from the left behind post. Rory Campbell's on the boundary. The guys, just confirming that uh, Seb Ross has been taken off as a tactical sub. Excited to see what Lance Collard can do. I reckon he's got a few tricks. Thanks, Rory. Keep an eye out for him. Thrown back in. Hawkins doing the ruck work against Marshall for Geelong. Got it down to Cameron. Hand pass to Stengel. Screws it back towards goal. It's offline to the left. Through for a minor score. So the Cats have kicked six behinds in this third quarter. The Saints 1-3. Geelong holding a 10-point advantage. Saints led early stages of the first quarter, but it's been really Geelong ever since then. Angadine Miller kicks it out of defensive 50. Philip who went up, so did Cameron. Neither of them got it. It was Mason Wood who kicked and then fell to the ground. Cameron going in for the Cats, hand pass towards Clark. Holmes picked it up and hand pass to Atkins. Atkins could hear close and he hand passed it to him who just hand passed blindly inside 50. Saints able to pick up the footy. It'll be a tackle though on Bonner. And the umpire will come in and throw it up 35 metres out from Geelong's goal. So another chance here for the Cats to extend that 10-point lead. Hawkins on the end of it. Hand passes to Clark. Spins, eyes the goals, oh. kicks towards it. Dempsey's there. Bounce back. through. It'll be a throw. It'll be a throw, so that won't count at all. It'll be a free going the way of Bonner of St Kilda. Still Geelong ahead by 10 points. Feels like they should be ahead by so much more, but Saints still in with a chance. Halftime on the Gold Coast as the Suns leading by 26 points against the Adelaide Crows. This is worked up the wing, and Max King takes the mark. From the kick of battle, looks up inside 50. Higgins the target, it clears him and Jack Henry. Tui at the back of the pack gathers. Under pressure from Burns, hand pass to Jack Henry. It bounces off Tui's chest and goes out of play. The Saints at least lock it in their forward 50, be it just a little untidy from Geelong. A throw in in the right forward pocket. It's something Max King can really add to his game. If you can take those contested marks up around the wing, and use that long leg to get the ball inside 50. It's going to really help them throughout the season. Blitz out wins the tap. Straight to Higgins, though. Can't get a clean hand pass away to Mitch Owens. Knocks it out to Winhager. His firing shot on goal goes out to the right. Out of bounds on the full. It's probably good 35, 40 metres away from goal where he's intending. Free kick will go the way of Jack Henry in the back pocket for Geelong. Counts leading by 10 points. 22 minutes gone, third term. So Jack Henry trying to put a full season together after... Injuries, foot injuries kept him out of a lot of games last year and the year before. His kick outside of defensive 50 is taken by Marshall of the Saints. So he'll look to send the Saints inside 50. His kick was smothered by Holmes. Saints might be able to regain it here through Wangarek Ganeem Miller. He hand passed to Marshall, got the ball back, then hand passed to Battle, who could get uh, the ball away to Windhager. Saints trying to move it forward to half forward. We'll go out of bounds and we'll have a throw in at half forward for St Kilda. It's been a little bit cute, Saints. They need to try and get in deep and long, give their crumbing forwards a chance to uh, get creative and be dangerous. The voice of Brad Sewell with you on ABC Sport. Thrown back in. Marshall wins down the tap for the Saints. And straight to Atkins. Kicks in the middle of the ground for Geelong. Stengel couldn't take the mark. Stocker gathers. Kicks the Saints up towards 50. No one's there. Jack Higgins caught 5, 10 metres off the play. And the mark taken by Zach Guthrie. Through the middle of the ground, he links up with Mitch Duncan. Gets the hand pass away to De Koning. High ball towards uh, left half forward. Duncan did well to spoil it away from Cooper Sharman. Got it down to Dempsey. Hand pass back to Mark O'Connor. Swings onto his left-hand side. Cameron and Wilkie, it clears the two and goes out of play. Cameron with a little chest bump to him. Cal Wilkie's been close to being All-Australian, but hasn't quite got that honour. Well, Jeremy Cameron, we know at his absolute best. He's a regular All-Australian member. The ten-time leading goal scorer. It's been a great battle between the two tonight. Cameron's kicked the two, but hasn't had a huge influence on the game. So Margin got out to 24 points in Geelong's favour. Now back down to 10 in the third quarter. Marshall just picks it out from the ruck. Wangadine Miller puts it on his boot, kicks it out blindly, and the mark will be a Geelong intercept taken by De Koning. So the ball will be coming straight back into Geelong's attacking 50. Kicks long, up goes Marshall. Highest hands can take the mark and kick across to Bonner. So Bonner's just happy to hold it here. And 
Go for a slow exit out of defensive 50. Finds Marshall still in defensive 50, just 35 metres out from goal. Marshall hand passes to Bonner. He fumbles it, can just get a kick away to get the Saints out of some danger. Picked up by Burns. He can't get the kick away. Picks it up again, then kicks it down. Chopped off, though, by Zach Tui of the Cats. Wants to try and move it quickly. Close out space. Wangani Miller a close late. Just held close up for a moment. Swings on his right-hand side. 60 metres out from home. Dempsey up against a couple. Cameron's there as well. Neither can take the mark. The kick trying to clear it from Marshall Smothered. Chance for battle trying to knock it out. Tanner Bruins brought down by a couple of Saints. And the umpire will ball it up in the left forward pocket for Geelong. I think if, if Rowley Bonner ran up into the fourth tier of the uh, Joel Selwood stand, they'd still handball the ball to him. <laughs> Might be a set play from the Saints to look to give it to him. Thrown up in the left forward pocket for Geelong. Sharman's clearing kick. Picked up by Mitch Duncan within range. It's across the face of goal. Over the head of Cameron and Wilkie. And it might have hit the right behind post. Out of bounds on the full. The free kick going the way of Callum Wilkie of the Saints. He chips it over the top to Bonner. Rory Campbell on the boundary. Pace of round one is starting to take a bit of a toll. Seeing a few players coming off uh, experiencing some cramps. So that'll be one to watch. Maybe the fittest team running out the game. They might be looking forward to that siren in a few minutes' time to mark the end of the third quarter as the ball's kicked out to centre wing, hickey side of the ground. Players surround the footy. Jack Henry on the bottom of the pack. All the players just waiting for the umpire to cross his arms over and toss the ball up. It's certainly getting very sloppy, this last part of this third quarter. If, if your team can snag a goal in this mess, they're doing really well. So Windhager taken high, and he'll get the free kick just backwards. The centre wing for the Saints chips it towards Steele, who takes the mark and wants to run onto it here. It's the Saints trailing by 10 points. Steele kicks inside 50. Mark taken by Owens. St Kilda with a late shot here to put them within a kick going into three-quarter time. He yeah, hasn't had a big night, Mitch Owens. Uh, he's worked hard, but hasn't had a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. I think the Cats have recognised that he's a very, very dangerous young player, and Tom Stewart has been standing next to him every time he's gone forward. Mitch Owens now running in. 45 metres out from goal, kicking towards the player's stand. It's completely offline. It's out of bounds on the full. Long will maintain that 10-point lead latter stages of the third term. Sums up the quarter a little bit. Yeah, and for those playing along at home, that's the eighth out on the full. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one goal so far in this third quarter. Sam Tui with a laser-like pass out of defence finds Bruin at right half back. Geelong 6-13-49 to the Saints 5-9-39. Geelong with six behinds in this third quarter. The Saints 1-3. Geelong switch it from the right back pocket to the left and Tom Stewart takes the mark. Wider still to O'Connor. As we're nudging towards three-quarter time, 28 minutes gone. Geelong just happy to control the tempo for the moment. Now O'Connor's going to have to find an option. All on his own in the right back pocket is Zach Guthrie. He can work it up to DeConing. A bounce off his chest. He has enough time to gather. Brent Hill's not charging at him. DeConing looks up around the hickey wing. Sends in the direction of Ollie Henry. He's been pretty quiet tonight. He was shoved out of that marking contest. And we'll get a free kick on the wing. Wants to play on quickly. Gets the hand pass to Holmes. Hand pass to Reece Stanley. The Ruckman almost missed Myers. He just kept it alive. Sliding in and gathering the ball on the boundary line. But it was smothered by Riley Bonner. And it goes out of play for a throw in. I think we all need a three-quarter time break. It's getting a bit sloppy out there. You can see a few players finding the breaks and the stoppage is pretty welcome at the moment. Hands on their knees as they wait for this ball to be thrown in. 30-second board has gone up from the bench. Marshall tapping it down. Picked up by Bonner. He shoves it on the boot this time. Out to centre wing. De Koning was there. Doesn't take the mark, but battles with Henry for the ball. Henry goes chasing after it. Pushed forward close to the boundary line. Atkins happy to take it over the line for another ball in. Centre wing just seconds remaining in this third term. Plenty of tired bodies out there in round one of the AFL season for both these two clubs. Just wanting to make it through to that three-quarter time huddle. As the ball gets tossed in, Windhager hand passes to Henry, kicks across to Steele, tries to be crafty by punching it towards Philippou. Allows Henry of the Saints to come in, help him out. Hand pass to Higgins and Philippou will get it back. Short chip kick forward. Finds Membry. 
Emery at half forward, kicks right on the siren towards the goal square. So just got that kick away before the three-quarter time siren. Just the one goal in that third quarter, and that was to the St Kilda debutant Darcy Wilson. It's Geelong leading by 10 points, 6 13 49. St Kilda 5 9 39. The goal kickers tonight so far Oliver Dempsey with three, Jeremy Cameron with two, Brad Close with one for Geelong. Whereas for St Kilda, two goals to Tim Membry, Mateus Philippou, Darcy Wilson, and Max King each with one apiece. Earlier today, it was the Bombers who defeated the Hawks by 24 points in front of 73,000 fans at the MCG. Jake Stringer led the way with four goals, but it was Archie Perkins who got the three votes in the ABC Football of the Year for his 24 disposals, 12 tackles, two goals and eight clearances. While GWS defeated North Melbourne by 39 points in Josh Kelly's 200th game, 17-19-121 to the Kangaroos, 13-4-82. Jesse Hogan got the three votes in his six goals. That's 10 goals in two rounds for the GWS forward. And on the Gold Coast, it's the Suns who lead at the main break by 26 points. The Gold Coast 5-4-34 to the Adelaide Crows 1-2-8. So Ben Ainsworth, the only multiple goal scorer there. Noah Anderson with 20 disposals. And Sam Flanders with 22. And in the NRL tonight, the Melbourne Storm in action taking on the New Zealand Warriors. A thriller there with the Storm leading by 2 points, 28 points to 20, uh, 28 points to 26, I should say. Coverage, of course, is available via the ABC Listen app. But three-quarter time here at Cadinia Park, Geelong leading by 10 points on Grandstand AFL on ABC Radio, ABC Sport Digital, and now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Hey, want to hear something really funny? Well, of course. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival is back. Woohoo! Yes. Kicking off with the gala on the ABC Wednesday the 27th. You ready for it? Then the All Stars Super Show, Wednesday night, April 3rd. Things to be a little bit loose, a little bit crazy. A brilliant star lineup for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Have a great festival, everybody. Starting with the gala, Wednesday night, March 27 on ABC TV and streaming on ABC iView. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Philippo call to play on. Down to the left, drives it up towards Membry. You know what? Massive play, he juggles it, surely pay the mark. Come on, umpire. Gary Ablett didn't hold it that long. The tap out comes to steal. He kicks towards King, who couldn't mark on the paint of 50. Deconing was there for Geelong. King recovers, can kick towards goal, top of the goal square. Membry paddles it down to Wilson. He puts through his first goal in AFL. It was a quick finish there from the youngster, and he's able to get his first goal in the big time. Wangaratta now to Geelong at Cadinia Park, and he gets goal number one. Lance Collard has just come on. He's running uh, across the ground as we speak, so the Saints have activated their substitute. The pace of round one is starting to take a bit of a toll, seeing a few players coming off uh, experiencing some cramps, so that'll be one to watch, maybe the fittest team running out the game. It's certainly getting very sloppy, this last part of this third quarter. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Geelong lead by 10 points at three-quarter time. It's tough work when there's not a lot of highlights, but uh, a great work from our team back in the studio. Mitch Turner with us tonight. But the Cats 6-13-49 to the Saints 5-9-39. And Nathan Burke providing his best optimism that it has been a little sloppy and I think everyone was looking for the three-quarter time break. Matt Clinch and Lauren Borden call on the action. Brad Sewell and Nathan Burke are your experts. Rory Campbell down on the boundary. A 10-point lead Geelong's way, but it still feels like Sully, the game could go either way. It does. Um, I was yeah, surprised during the call the margin was only nine. It's felt like Geelong have, have controlled uh, larger portions of this game. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's been there as much their inefficiency going forward, Berkey, or whether... Saints have been defending well. It feels like a little bit, a little bit of both. Um, but for the most part, I mean, there's a few instances from Hawkins that stand that come to mind. He's had a number of opportunities in front of goal. He's been a little bit fumbly tonight. Um, it's not what we uh, have become accustomed to when we're seeing when we think of Hawkins in front of goal. Um, Saints feel as though they've got the ability to score really quickly. Um, but first game, tired legs. It's been warm. To what extent do you expect that to be a factor, Berkey? 
Yeah, it will be a factor, absolutely. And the, the home ground is probably going to come into play a, a little bit here. Just keeps you that little bit fresher. Hawkins just for the one behind so far. I'm not sure how many games he's played down here where he doesn't kick a goal. So you, you probably expect him just on the law of averages to get on the scoreboard at some stage. For me, though, with the Saints, they're behind... And if I'm Ross Lyon, I'm telling them to defend like their lives depend on it because when the Saints defend well, they turn the ball over in their front half and they get repeat entries inside 50. And that's what we saw probably midway through that quarter. They defended, really lifted their defensive rating. Geelong, all they could do was kick the ball long down the line. Saints won it back and went back again and again and again. If they just concentrate on just attacking, hey, we're, we're behind, we need to run, carry, we need to overlap, all that sort of stuff, Geelong are, are too good. They won't, be, they won't allow that to happen. So to me, the Saints need to really up their defence and that will allow them to score, as funny as that sounds. Whereas the, the Cats, in that first quarter in particular, they were really just, just being really careful with their ball movement and just finding those short passes, finding those short passes, not uh, worrying about the zone of the Saints, and that's when they looked the most dangerous. The only problem that they had was that they weren't scoring. Uh, They were getting the ball inside 50 a lot. So going back to just slowing the game down, playing the game at their pace, that will actually help the Cats. So uh, in in for a really interesting last quarter, these stoppage clearances are going to be important. Rory Campbell on the boundary. Any movement with a cat sub? Uh, there is. Sean Manor has just pulled on the hoops. He'll get his first taste of AFL action. Looks like Tyson Stengel has been subbed off. He was getting a lot of work just before three-quarter time and then again at the break there and what maybe some cramp issues or something like that. So possibly that's the reason that des- uh, decision's been made. All right. Thank you, Rory. So the mature age recruit from Werribee had a pretty good grand final. We kicked six goals in a losing side won the norm goss medal for best on ground gets his opportunity in the big time and it's always great to see those stories recognized berkey at 26 years of age you, you you're entitled to almost say you know what my, my time's passed me their dreams over they're fascinated with these young 18 year olds coming through so well done geelong it's a really bold effort and uh well done for the young man for sticking to it Cats by 10 points into the final turn we go. Marshall wins down the tap for the Saints, but it's Tanner Bruin who gets the clearance for Geelong. Kicks out to the hickey stand wing. Leading the foot race and getting out there first was Mark Blitzaz, but he can't get a disposal away. This is tackled by Wood, and the ball spills across the boundary line. No major changes in lineups. They're all pretty happy with where they, how they're going. Josh Battle standing against uh, Jeremy Cameron. That's going to be an interesting one. Toss back into play. Stanley wins down the tap. Henry can't break clear. He's locked up by Dangerfield. It's on the AFL logo on the Hickey stand wing. Plenty of play on that outer side of the ground tonight. The umpire tosses it up on the logo. Crouch battles for it with Blitzarves. Blitzarves wins out and hand passes it away to Bruin. He's tackled the moment he grabs the footy. And we'll hand it back to the umpire for another ball up. Basically in the same spot. Up it goes. Tapped away. Bruin will run onto this and spin around and put it on his boot. Sends it down the wing, trying to gain some territory. Mason Wood stands back there for the Saints. Takes the intercept mark. Spins and goes. Spinning ball to the top of half forward towards King. Juggles it. Henry just steals it off him. Doesn't get the mark. Henry parries the kick in. Holmes there, trying to stop it. Webster collects, celebrates with the goal. Membry, Membry with the... His third goal of the evening. And the Saints now are within four points. So three goals to Tim Membry in this evening. And it means now, despite Geelong having so much of the footy, the Saints now within a kick of taking the lead. Well, I didn't see the, the lead-up, but uh, I looked up just in time to see Higgins. He, he was outpointed in the marking contest. He, he was out of position, but just did enough to bring the ball to ground. It could have almost been claimed a mark by the Cats player, but well done by Higgins to just have a, a second effort at the football. 
and Tim Memory puts through his third. As Max Holmes have got back, who couldn't hang on to the mark. Dangerfield gets the clearance, kicks Geelong into attack, onto a battle for the Saints, gets the hand pass away to Stocker, chips it back to the teeth of goal. Bonner hasn't quite dealt with it, rushes it through. Umpire's going to say he deliberately did so. I'm not sure he actually did. I think he just fumbled it. But maybe he didn't disguise it in the eyes of the umpire well enough. Have a look at this, Sully. Tell me what you think. No, I think he's pretty unlucky there. I think it's a genuine fumble. I think he's made that look <laughs> very untidy yeah. and has made the cost for it. But the umpire think he intentionally did it. And Ollie Henry gets the free kick deep in the right forward pocket. One step, snaps across his body and misses everything all the way across the teeth of goal. And the Saints fans... Let that player stand in. They're happy to let the umpires and everyone know about it. Geelong by four points. Three minutes go on final term. So Stocker to bring the ball back in for the Saints. Kicks it out to right half back. Crouch takes it. Hand passes it to Wood. Dangerfield knocks it out of his hands and Bruin comes in. Hand passes it away to Cameron. 45 metres out from the boundary. Will pop it up to the hot spot in front of goals. Mark can't be taken. Stocker punches it away. Hand pass comes across from battle to steal. And steal. Touches the ball on the ground, then bounces it. Left back pocket for St Kilda. Kicks it towards Higgins in front of Holmes. Takes the mark. The umpire might not have paid it. He didn't. So it'll be a ball, a throw in rather. Half forward for Geelong. Just four points in this game. Four minutes gone in the final term. Cats have got out to 24 points on a couple of occasions with the Saints trying to hang in there as Higgins gets the clearance. Hand pass away to Burns through the middle of the ground to Max King. No one inside the forward 50. Does he go for glory? He does. From the edge of the centre square. How will it bounce? It bounces and misses to the right-hand side. And Lance Collard on Boo was racing back to goal and probably thought, just put it out in front of me. In the end, he went for home. Geelong by three points, four minutes gone, final turn. Yeah, good on the young fellow turned around and said, hey, Max, I'm in my first game, but uh, you can do better than that. Put the ball out in front of me. No one's going to run past me. So a bit of a bad decision there by Max King. Would have been great if it had gone through, but didn't. O'Connor juggles the mark for Geelong, right half back for the Cats, then kicks down in front of the benches. It'll be Clark who hand passes it across to Bruin, goes back to Holmes. High skying ball towards Henry, takes the mark, half forward for Geelong. His teammates run ahead in front of him. He's got Dangerfield close on the 50, but Henry will go further forward towards the goal square. Mark nearly taken by battle. He recovers, collects, hand pass to Stocker, gets the hand pass back, goes forward to Marshall, who will kick long down the wing. Oh. In comes Memory. He was against two cats and he just jumped in front of them took the mark for St Kilda, trying to spur them on to a win. 29 years of age, Tim Membry, he is having some game. Up towards Collard, shoved out of it, free kick. King wants to take the advantage again. Oh, he's he blazes again. into the pocket <laughs> and it trickles out of play. A rush of blood to the head, Max King, who thought he was Superman and could do it all. He misses. Good and ball. a boundary throw in. Lance Collard was in for his first kick of the footy. And uh, Max King burns him twice in, twice in a minute. So it's deep in attack, though, for the Saints as it's thrown back in. Marshall in front against Stanley. Knocked down to the front. Crouch knocks to the back. Marshall sidestep. Kicks towards goal. Henry gets a touch on it. That's Jack. And it goes through for a minor score. Geelong by two points. Rory Campbell on the boundary. Well, guys, the Cats say there's no injury issue there, so a tactical sub. We've been here before, though. Thanks, Rory. So Ro just Rowan Marshall just got a bit fancy then. Should have just snapped it the first time, tried to balk around, got himself into trouble. So only two points the margin now in favour of Geelong. Well, Jasney kicks forward to Dempsey. Defensive half of the ground for Geelong. Kicking along the broadcast wing of the ground. Ollie Henry at the front tried to play for the free kick in the back. Tui picked it up for the Cats. Hand passed it away to Myers. Then got the ball back. Kicks inside 50 towards the goals. Only person back there was Mason Wood for the Saints. So it's still Geelong leading by two points, unable to make anything of that inside 50 entry. Riley Bonner in the right back pocket. That's the boundary line with a chip kick over the top. It's worked up to Stocker. Takes the mark through the kick from battle. Right half back for the Saints. 6-11-47, Sully trailing Geelong, 6-13-49. Sorry, Clinchy. Uh, Saints are defending well at the moment, but 
this momentum they need to hit the scoreboard. From the kick up the wing, no mark claim. Mason Wood gets a hand pass out to Crouch. Hand pass looking for Owens, intercepted by Zach Guthrie. Ran into a dead end. That's, uh, Mason Wood and Bonnet lay the tackle. A ball up under the hickey stand wing. Cats leading by two points. Cats haven't scored a goal since red time of that second quarter. Just leading by two points now. As players converge around the footy. Tom Atkins is there for the Cats. And umpire will call high against Tom Atkins. Going in for the tackle against Jack Steele. So free kick will go the way of the Saints. Right half back. Captain Jack Steele will hold it. Just chip it forward to Mason Wood. So Wood down the hickey wing. Half forward, kicks to the top of the 50. Mark can't be taken. Stewart's there for the catch, tries to go on a run. Tackled. St Kilda will go inside 50 here as they play on. Higgins with the footy, keeps running almost to the top of the 50. Shanks the kick, goes forward. Collab can't do anything with it. Duncan can recover now for the Cats. Hand pass to Bruin, he kicks forward. And his kick is picked off by Wangany Miller of the Saints. Giving the Saints another opportunity to go inside 50 now. You got the journey, Berkey. No, I don't think he has. It's a, it's a big kick. He's a good kick of the football. He's an accurate kick of the football, but he's he kicks it very low. For sure, reverse Moz. <laughs> One of uh, six Saints who played every game last season. They, they absolutely love him. They think he's going to be a superstar too. Messiah Wanganin Miller. Up. Damaging by foot. Can he strike from downtown? From 55 sets flight, he got the journey comfortably and missed out to the right-hand side. All single digits at the moment for the Saints. It's a one-point lead Geelong's way. So it's it past nine minutes gone in the final turn. Proved me wrong. He got there and hit the base of the fence, but uh, it just flew like a wounded duck. <laughs> it's got the Saints to within one point, though. Stewart brings the Cats back in, kicks towards Cameron. He marks the footy right half back for Geelong. Stanley calling for it along the broadcast wing. He might go for him this time. He'll go to run, get some distance, get the ball as far as he can. Goes to Stanley, who can't mark. Myers is at the drop, though. Hand pass to Ollie Henry. He gets tackled, but can get a hand pass away. The tackle will come now. And it'll stay inside 50 for the Cats. Dempsey with the ball, centers it up. Mark taken by Tui. Dempsey with an assist now to go with his three goals potentially as he centres the ball up to Zach Tui. He'll kick from directly in front, 35 metres out. Dempsey's been terrific. Great poise under pressure. Took, took some time. Measured his disposal, looked inside and a penetrating kick to advantage. Really clever. Mason Wood, I'm not sure what you were doing there. Completely misjudged that spoil. So Tui directly in front. The Cats need this to go ahead by a little more. And he sinks it. Geelong now with a little bit of a buffer. Seven points ahead again. It's ten minutes played in this fourth quarter. The home side 7-13-55. Leading St Kilda 6-12-48. Well played Geelong. They've just absorbed this pressure. Saints had a couple of opportunities inside 50, in front of goal, a couple of stoppages, couldn't convert. And again, Jeremy Cameron involved, just took extra ground at half-back for Geelong, took on Higgins, who was on the mark, carried the ball a little bit further. And again, Geelong just doing enough to keep their noses in front. Brad's all with you on ABC Sport. Comes the fourth individual goal kicker for the Cats. Geelong's first goal scorer since the 24 minute mark of the second quarter. They can keep six behinds in the third quarter. Back in the middle of the ground. Henry tries to break away for the Saints. Can't do so as Holmes wrestles for the footy with him. The suburban Geelong chance around the Cattery. Trying to urge their charges forward. O'Connor, clever little soccer, got it to close, hand pass to Myers, inside 50, Ollie Henry down low, sliding in, just got his fingertips underneath it, and takes the mark directly in front, 35 metres out. Unfortunately, Liam Stocker there just let his player lead him to the football coming off their Geelong half-forward line. 
and then the overlap handball, quick kick, and a Geelong mark. If you're playing on that half-back line, you can't let your half-forward lead up and get the ball, the, the rolling ball, and handball to players coming past. So it was really poor effort there by Stocker. Quiet night for Ollie Henry tonight. Just the one behind so far for back-to-back goals for the Cats. He misses to the right-hand side. Saints fans take a deep breath. It's an eight-point margin. Geelong's way at the 13-minute mark of the final term. Matt Clinch and Lauren Borden calling the action. Brad Saul and Nathan Burke with Rory Campbell down on the boundary. He's had three shots for goal tonight, Henry, and they've all been really ugly off the boot. It's like he's got a sore foot and doesn't want to kick the ball hard. So Bonner with a long kick out of defence going the way of Owens. It's picked off by Holmes, though. The hand passes across to Clark, skies the ball inside 50. Sharman picks it up, slams it on his boot to get it out of defensive 50. Good kick marked by Windhager, who hand passes to a running hill. Long kick down the hickey wing. Intercept mark, though, taken by Jack Henry. So Geelong now will hold on to the footy. Out of side of the ground, they're still leading by eight points. Looking to hold on to this margin as we tick over 14 minutes in the final term. Max King has to bring that ball to ground. If you can't mark it, you've got to make sure the Geelong players don't mark it. Is that an interesting final term, Max King? Just the one goal next to his name for the match. Trying to make it all happen. Myers in the middle of the ground, spinning the ball in his hands for Geelong. Kicks to the lead, unable to juggle the mark. Charging out was Blitz out, so it spills out in front of Stocker and Dangerfield. The two collide. Umpire's going to play contact below the knees, and I'm not sure Dangerfield is fully deserving of the free kick as Stocker is down and he is grabbing at his leg. So we're going to look at the replay here to just work out whether he did initiate the contact below the knee. He's got like a, a sore back, I think, Stocker. So Dangerfield won't be able to have his shot because uh, Stocker is needing some medical treatment and he's technically on the mark in front of Dangerfield. So the trainers and the doctor have come out. That's... It's, he's, he's, a, he's allowed to bend over and push the ball forward. He didn't dive on it. If he stays upright, then Dangerfield runs straight into his head. So that's, that's where the rule... Contact below the knees rule really annoys me because if both those players stay up higher, if Stocker doesn't go as low as he does, then he gets hit in the head. He actually got to the ball first, Stocker, but he did slide in. Instead of limping off, he'd be carried off. Dangerfield's right arm struck him high. The Geelong captain from 55. He misses out to the right. And another minor score for the Cats. The last three scores in the match. Geelong leading by nine points at the 15-minute mark of the final term. Liam Stocker comes to the bench. So Saints trying to move it quickly out of defence here. Brad Crouch takes a bounce, then kicks it to centre wing, out of sight of the ground. Paul Jasny sits back there and marks it. Stops the Saints from going any further. Again, Geelong take a mark from a long St Kilda kick. It's got to come to ground. Paul Jasny was aiming for close. It'll be picked up, though, by the Saints. Windhager across to Cordy, who kicks down. Apologising again, a little further forward this time, takes the intercept mark. That's three in a row. So this time he'll centre the ball more than he did previously. Goes deep inside 50 for the Cats. Mark will be taken by Ollie Henry. Henry gets another chance to kick a goal. Hawkins will help him up now or he'll stretch him out too. An important kick coming up for Henry. Well, I'll look at Membry and King mainly. Three times the ball's come out of, of the Saints' back line, albeit hasn't been super clean, but the Geelong players have marked three balls and sent the ball back inside 50. They're going to eventually, they're too good a forward line not to capitalise. Henry, this is the easiest shot he's had tonight. He's had three stinkers so far. What can he do here? 30 metres out to atone for his misses. He does just that. At the moment, Geelong most needed for him to kick the goal. He sends it through the middle. And Geelong's lead goes out now to 15 points. It's 16 minutes gone in the fourth quarter. It makes it a little bit easier now to, for Geelong to try and hold on to this lead. It's an um, unfortunate first to kill. Their half board line has been unable to bring the ball to ground. The half back line for Geelong. Last four or five attempts have been able to pump the ball back inside their forward 15. It's just 
Repeat entry, repeat entry. It's 58 inside 50s to 37. Sheer weight of numbers. It's given Geelong more opportunity in front of goal. Is that the straw that might break the camel's back, Sully? Feels that way, doesn't it, Pudgy? Yeah, they've only kicked six so far for the game, the Saints, so they need a quick three. Back in the middle of the ground, Blitzhouse tries to follow up his ruck work, gets the clearance for Geelong, swings on his left-hand side, long towards Hawkins, who gets with a Cordy to take the chest mark. Tight in the left forward pocket. The Cats are their ruthless best now. Yeah, he knew he couldn't go goalless down here at Cadinia Park. The one behind for Tom Hawkins as he opens up the angle and makes it three goals on the trot. And Geelong may have just closed off the contest there. The Cats by 21 points, having kicked six behinds in the third term. Tim Membry kicked the opening goal the final term to close within four points. The Cats' response has been impressive. Three goals on the trot, 9-15-69. The Saints, 6-12-48. 18 minutes gone, final term on ABC Sport. Well, the stats say the centre clearances are nine to five in favour of the Cats, but I reckon that the five that the Saints have got have just been first possession, scrumming the ball forward. The, the Cats have been far cleaner out of the middle. The Saints are winning the stoppage clearances all up, 32 to 23, but the all-important centre bounces, the Cats are well on top. So Geelong now 21 points ahead as Blitzarves palms it down. Crouch picks it up though for St Kilda. Moves it forward towards Marshall, shoves it on his boot in front of Windhager, running forward, tries to bounce it to himself, then soccers it forward, still chasing after it. Jack Henry there as well. Taps it forward, ball still in play for St Kilda inside their forward 50. Finally knocked out. Oh, and it'll be deliberate. So deliberate against De Koning, tapping it forward, means the King will have a set shot from the boundary line. Right forward pocket. Raise the big full forward. He needs to take the responsibility here. Don't look at passing. Don't think about doing anything else. Just go back, put it through. So Max King lines up. Drop punt towards goals. It's across and just makes it for a minor score. So Margin now 20 points. Geelong still leading the way 20 minutes into the final term. This is where the Saints' defence has to come into play. They've got to turn the ball over in the front half. They haven't been able to take the ball from one end of the ground to the other. They've got to win these balls. Tom Stewart up towards Dempsey. The young Geelong forward can't take the mark, and Cal Wilkie intercepts. Short to steal. Saints need to try and make something happen. It's into the left forward pocket. Owens is outnumbered. Stewart gathers for Geelong. Half pass to Deconing. Hugs the boundary line with a kick, which goes across it. And a free kick going the way of the Saints. Liam Henry will take it. Twin wing at half forward on the interchange side. Turns and comes inboard to Wilkie. Back to Henry. Trying to find an avenue past Ollie Henry. Liam Henry back on his right-hand side. Not a good kick. In the left forward pocket. Didn't do Winhager any favours. And Reese Stanley takes the intercepting mark for Geelong. Well, those last two inside 50s from Steele and Henry have both been terrible. Can't blame the forwards for not getting on the end of those ones. Stanley chipped it towards Collajasny. Defensive 50 for Geelong. Goes long down the wing. Marshall's there. Takes it. Blitzarves falls over him. Marshall holding onto it. And the umpire will pay a free kick to Marshall for that. So again, Geelong fans not happy with many decisions tonight. Marshall kicks down to Liam Henry. Marks in front of our broadcast position. He turns around, spins, kicks inside 50 for Heinz Mitch Owens. Mitch Owens holds on to the chest mark. 40 metres out from goal. King goes down as well. It'll be Owens now. Tough angle. He goes to snap it. Doesn't hit the right side of the footy. Completely across the face of goals. And it just sneaks in there for one point. So another chance going begging for the Saints. 19 points the margin in favour of the Cats. 22 minutes gone in the final term at Cadinia Park. Well, on the Gold Coast, 24 minutes gone third term. It's the Suns who lead by 34 points against the Adelaide Crows. Looking to make it two wins from their opening two matches under new coach Damien Hardwick. We'll take you there at the completion of this game. 
intercepting mark taken by Cooper Sharman from the Mitch Duncan kick and then a smother well done by Mark O'Connor ricochets back to Sharman who puts it out on the full and the Geelong faithful let him know about that you don't turn one mistake into two one mistake was oh it was touched it was touched so it's going to be a boundary throw in as Patrick Dangerfield was about to take the free kick just the boundary up by Camo and said it was touched throw in but need the ball get the ball back in it's just just inexperienced now they've put Sharman forward Got him out of the back line. 19 points is the Cats lead, but time now starting to become an enemy. 22 minutes gone in the final turn for the Saints. Sean Manners in there trying to get his first disposal as a cat. He gathers, dodges and weaves across halfback. Gets a kick through the middle of the ground. Up towards Ollie Henry. Can't take the mark. Wilkie spoils it down. Ricochets back to him. Down pass away to Borner. Swings onto his left-hand side. Kicks out to Burns. Who marks it left halfback. Burns needs to move the footy quickly here if the Saints are any chance. Sneaking ahead in this game. It's a slim chance. Kicks it to Wanganeen Miller, who holds the footy for a few seconds before darting the ball inside the centre square to steal. He'll switch the ball to the outer side of the ground. And it'll be Wilson on debut with the footy. Kicks inside 50 towards Liam Henry. Jumps, can't mark. Might be able to gather it here. He can't. Higgins can. Snaps towards goal. It's offline, but the mark will be taken on the line. It's Cooper Sharman's push forward. I think the Cats were playing an extra player in defence in their back line, and they've said to the Saints, OK, even it up, go one-on-one. On one. So there's seven-on-seven seven inside forward 50, and he's got on the end of it from the back line. He's had a quiet night, Cooper Sharman. Couple of steps. Snap. Sneaks it through. Perhaps the Saints still in touch. 13 points the margin now. St Kilda trying to sneak ahead. 24 minutes gone in this fourth term. There's not a lot of time left. St Kilda 7-14-56. Geelong 9-15-69. It's important for the Saints here, young side, not to roll over. Uh, not to let Geelong get another quick one. Geelong have generally responded pretty well after a St Kilda score, so really important the Saints try and knuckle down and get his first clearance out of the centre. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go. A centre clearance and a quick goal would certainly make everyone sit up and take notice. Stanley and Marshall in the middle of the ground. Liam Henry in for the Saints with Steele and Brad Crouch on Dangerfield. Bruin and Atkins in there for the Cats. Bounce back. Stanley tries to knock it down, but it's Marshall who gets it to steal. The Saints do get the clearance. Kicks down low for King. He was held. Free kick going the way of the Saints. It was the non-officiated umpire. It was at left half forward who blew his whistle. And Max King trots back, having had a final quarter probably to forget. Can he come in and kick a quick goal here to keep everyone interested? That's probably the, the cleanest centre bounce break that the Saints have had need to capitalise Max King, the 23 year old the crown in the secure forward line he comes in and kicks the goal the game is still alive the Saints with two quick goals to pull it back to a 7 point margin 26 minutes gone in the final term Geelong 9-15-69 to the Saints 8-14-62 Max King with his second Surely this is where the 666 comes into play. Get that centre bounce. You're one on one inside your defensive 50, especially here at Geelong. The wingers, it's a long way between the centre square and inside 50. They're not really pushing back and getting extra numbers. So this centre bounce is crucial. Saints have got they've got Henry in there. They've got uh, Windhager, is it? And uh, Steele. And Steele, Crouch. It's very Ross Lyon, isn't it? Eight goals in the match and they kick two in a minute. Liam Henry, Jack Steele dancing around that centre circle, having a few conversations about their plans. Atkins, Bruin and Dangerfield and Stanley in there for the Cats. And the umpire bounces <laughs> sideways. It always well, goes that way. At least it's fair now. It's going to get chucked up. There's going to be no advantage to anyone. Let's see who get their hands to it. Marshall has dominated the ruck tap so far. So still time left for St Kilda to get ahead. Bonner comes from defence to take the footy, hand pass it away. 
Atkins. Hand passes it to Myers. Kicks to long inside 50. Cameron's there running onto it. He can't gather it. He taps it away. It's further away from Geelong's goals now. Dangerfield. Picks it up, turns around, kicks inside 50. Mark won't be taken. There might be a chance here to have a shot. It was Manor. His kick was smothered. Wangani Miller picks it up for the Saints. Kicks and Kilda outside of defensive 50. Stewart was at the back there to tap it down. Geelong might be able to go here again. They do. They'll go through Stanley. High, skying ball inside 50. Myers trying to do something with it. It was taken by Steele. And Cordy clears the Saints from danger. Mark taken by Burns, left half back for the Saints. Two minutes 20 to go. Geelong leading by seven points. Wood from half back up towards Owens. Pushed out of the contest. Off hands. It gets to the back of Filippo. Gathered by Higgins. Kicks up to King. He marks in the left forward pocket. They're streaming forward. Can he get to Liam Henry? He leaves it in the end. And the mark is taken by the debutant. Darcy Wilson. Deep in the right forward pocket. Steps out. Snaps across his body and puts it through. Hang on to your hats. A minute 47 to go. Geelong lead by a point. And it's Darcy Wilson who kicks his second. All of a sudden, the Saints have managed to kick three goals in three minutes. Geelong 9-15-69 to St Kilda 9-14-68. Stand by. The Saints are trying to pinch it here at the Cattery for the first time in 25 years. Critical. Contest one in defensive half for St Kilda, and again we saw Geelong let the ball get out the back at their half back line, where Jack Higgins was waiting, allowing plenty of space for King to run into, and cleverly he swung around, put it into space. King instead of blazing away, which he had done previously tonight. Chris Scott won't be happy with the catch. We've seen no sign of them slowing the game down no. and just sort of holding onto the footy. They're going as fast as what the Saints are. Saints down by a point but with all the momentum at the moment. His play restarts in the middle. Here's Henry. Couldn't gather. Stanley just suckers it forward off the ground towards Myers. He does the same and puts it. Bounces once inside forward 50 for Geelong. Dangerfield hand pass to Duncans. Close has got it. He can't gather. Cameron's there for the Cats. Hand passes away to Atkins who just puts it forward. Oh. In the path of Manor. His kick smothered. Desperate defensive from St Kilda. Trying to get it out. Cordy just shoves it off the boot. Geelong will have a shot at goal and it'll be Paddy Dangerfield with the footy with the intercept mark he'll be kicking from 50 metres out and importantly he'll be buying a bit of time for the Cats as well Well, I thought that the goal was through for the Cats but it was Zane Cordy coming out and from the front on smother kept the game alive but the quick kick out Paddy Dangerfield just smart. He knew where to place himself, where the quick kick was going to land, and uh, just, he just didn't mark that by accident. He knew what was going to happen if the Saints got hold of the footy and he got on the end of it. Dangerfield chews up his full 30 seconds before kicking from 52 metres out. It might not make the distance. It'll be a goal. It'll just sneak through. Dangerfield kicks it every bit of 51 metres takes the ball through the goals at the players' stand end to ensure Geelong will finish with a round one win at Cadinia Park tonight. It's Geelong at 10-15-75, leading St Kilda 9-14-68, seven points ahead now after St Kilda made things tight. Well, I was behind that pretty much the whole way. And it was left going through from behind. And then the last minute just just swung back to the right and went through. But uh, that, that's, a, that's a leader's shot for goal. That's a captain's shot for goal. And um, yeah, just ice this game. 36 seconds remain. What a captain's goal from Patrick Dangerfield. There's he again once more. Getting the clearance. Hand pass to Atkins. Kicks out to Dempsey. Who running back with the flight takes the mark on the interchange side. Geelong 10, 15, 75. St Kilda 9, 14, 68. The Saints kick three goals in three minutes, but Geelong have steady. Dempsey Long up towards Stanley. Can't take the mark. Manor gathers outside of the boot towards goal. It's trickling. It won't quite get there. And racing back, Wilson rushes it through for a minor score. Geelong by eight points, 32 minutes gone. That really would have been the icing on the cake. A goal to the debutant, but no matter... 
Geelong that open up their account in round one with a win on the opening night of the Joel Selwood stand. In front of 40,000 fans, they get the win by eight points. The greatest team of all. Quarter time, they went back, but then went back up, but then went up by 13 points at half time. The margin got as big as 24 points before it got down to just one point in this final term. Then it was Paddy Dangerfield sealing the goal for his side, the captain ensuring the Cats get the full four points in the opening round of the season. The greatest team of all. A long win by eight points at Cadinia Park, and there's no place like home. It won't go down as an all-time classic, but we did get the thrill in the final term as the Saints offered the best in which they had on offer with three quick goals in succession before Geelong answered through their captain, Patrick Dangerfield. And I guess after last year, when 2023, they were the defending premiums and a lot didn't go right, they lost their first three games. Chris Scott's charges. They're on the board with a positive start in 2024. The thoughts of Brad Sewell and Nathan Burke with you on ABC Sport. Not a, not a, a, not a great game to watch. A lot of errors, but very entertaining. Um, credit to St Kilda. Finished really strongly, and it was important for the young side to do so. To travel down the highway. Um, a really important night for Geelong. The opening of the Joel Selwood stand. They acquitted themselves quite well, Saints. They had their opportunities. There's a lot of learnings for the young side to come out of that. But but we saw this really exciting brand of football, this slingshot football from half back from the Saints. Um, clearly, they've recruited with a purpose. The game plan is, uh, is being executed accordingly. But tonight, they just fell short against an experienced side because those last couple of... That last centre bounce in particular... Um, the actions of the, of the side just knocking the ball forward, winning those critical 50-50 balls to hit it back into space. Clutch kick by Dangerfield from outside 50. Um, a, a well-deserved victory for Geelong, an important victory for Geelong in this round one opening of the, the Joel Selwood stand. Yeah, I think the Cats were the, the better team for the vast majority of that game. You look at the inside 50, 63 to 44 in favour of the Cats. But really, the only thing that kept the Saints in it was that their efficiency inside 50. So they had 28 shots for goal from 44 entries, going at 63%, So, which is a very, very high ratio. The, the Cats were at 47%, which is OK, but 63 inside 50 shows that they dominated through the middle and a lot of that was because they set up really well they played this game really well and uh, when the Cats are intercept marking, marking the ball around their half back line along the wing getting those repeat entries that's when they're playing their best football. I think Chris Scott if you had to pick one area in particular you'd just say look how our inside 50 finishing 10 goal 16 was, was poor but also there was periods of time where they just kicked the ball to the Saints defenders uh, Hawkins we didn't see him get on the lead a lot and you've probably got to give uh, Zane Cordy a fair bit of credit there with his positioning it was risky he was playing in front but we didn't see Hawkins come flying at the footy and demand it chest out like he always does he was trying to get the ball over the back and I only kicked the one goal for the game so well done there by Cordy but you know, the Cats to me they were, were solid. It wasn't a great performance, but you call it a solid performance. Didn't play our best footy, but we got the all-important four points. The Saints, I think the Saints supporters will be driving back down the highway thinking, you know what, uh, I've seen something new from the Saints that what I didn't see last year. I saw a bit more attacking flair from a Ross Lyon team that we don't normally see in the past. Unfortunately, that attacking flair come at the expense of their normal defensive strong dower efforts 
only had the 47 tackles for the game. They were out tackled in this particular game. So if they can put both together, the defensive side of their game, the typical Ross Lyon, with the flair of that movement, well, you know, they're going to be hard to beat and, and good to watch. But uh, today they just couldn't put it all together, whereas the Cats, solid effort from the Cats who know how to play, know how to play this ground in particular and deserved uh, four points uh, in the end. Geelong led by four points at quarter time, by 13 points at half time. They got out by as much as 24 points in the second quarter. Then the Cats kicked six behind, so St Kilda's 1-3 in the third quarter before the Saints booted four goals, five to Geelong's 4-3 in the final term. It was the debutant, Darcy Wilson, who kicked his second. At that stage, there was two minutes, 20 to go on the clock. He pulled the Saints back within a point. Patrick Dangerfield takes the mark at right half forward. Brad Sewell, it was a big moment for the captain. He went back and kicked it. Thankfully, they don't put too many coats of varnish on the goalpost down here at Cadinia Park because it swung wickedly from left to right. And I'm not sure his teammate Max Holmes was all that certain he <laughs> kicked it in the moment, but it did go through. It was a steadier which Geelong desperately needed. Yeah, it certainly was. And as as good a kick as that was from, from Danger, his positioning... Uh, was really important as well, and it probably highlights just the inexperience of the St Kilda back line. Um, they mucked around with the ball uh, and overused it on, the, on a couple of occasions prior to that, and, and the kick that came from the goal square had to be positioned more closely towards the boundary line as opposed to it being uh, you know, almost the top of the 50, um, which is where there were a number of Geelong players waiting for that rebound. And Ollie Dempsey... I mean, he's going to make a name for himself if he can kick yeah. three goals in the manner in which he did tonight. There's a bit of flashiness about him with the uh, the blonde tie back here and the pink boots, but uh, the future looks pretty bright when uh, Tom Hawkins eventually does decide to call it a day. No, he was terrific. Um, I mean, the, the stats f- speak for themselves tonight, but it was the manner in which he sort of... Sort of you know, 15 disposals, uh, seven marks and three goals won. Um, just showed great poise, great composure, good decision making um, and uh, in what, only his eighth game or eighth thereabouts, game. did not look out of place whatsoever. So bright future there for Dempsey and some and somebody that the Geelong fans can, can really look forward to, to blossoming this year and then further on. You'll have to decide whether you're going to give him votes in your votes, <laughs> surely. Well done, Bergie. <laughs> Well done. He had the nine score involvements as well, Ollie Dempsey. So, uh, yes, um, a good game played by him. You mentioned, Berkey, for the Saints fans heading back down the highway. Um, have you featured in the finals last year? They obviously lost that elimination final to the Giants. It was convincing in the end, 24 points. But uh, they would be pleased by the return of, of Tim Membry, who kicked three goals. He was a late withdrawal from that game, and he's spoken about the challenges he's had with, with mental health. In the lead-up to that match, so um, for he alongside Max King, I mean, there are some positive signs there, but um, not quite the finished product that Ross Lyon certainly started last year on with such a such a positive start. Yeah, a bit sloppy, although I think if you... When the fixture comes out and you eagerly look at round one, who you're going to play, I don't think anyone says, oh, yippee, we've got Geelong down at your Park. So <laughs> um, it's always very, very tough to win down here. They put up a good effort. So they, they're going away you know, with some positives. They didn't get blown away and they hung in there. And as you said, a minute and a half to go, they were one point down. Um, I think Henry was good in his, his first game. Uh, Bonner running off the half-back line was... They obviously love him. They, they give him the ball whenever they can. Um, young Wilson... He, made some blues but he's going to do that in his very very first game of football but he goes away with two goals that's a, uh, a pretty good effort and they they like the way he goes about it Collard really only had the last quarter had a couple of opportunities taken away from him could have had a goal with his first kick if Max King had to just lowered his eyes a little bit but um, I think their, their new players did well saw some growth from a couple of other young players as well and uh, the back line is always going to be a little bit of a, a worry coming up against tall forward lines. Now, Callum Wilkie does an outstanding job. Uh, Josh Battles, probably the next fall, tallest. Cordy, he's going to have to really stand up this year because Dougal Howard is probably out for a good four or five weeks with a, a severe hamstring. So it's going to be a little bit of a makeshift tall back line until they can get Dougal back. But uh, no, I think there's a, a lot to like about the Saints and uh, that potentially, could we see the end of the 
Oh, the Ross Lyon Dow footy, and it's six goals to seven in the end. It's uh, it's, it's probably it's, the thing, isn't it? You'd love to see them be just a tiny yeah. bit more attacking at times, knowing fully that that's the, the yeah. mantra that Ross Lyon has always uh, pride his game on. Did you you want to play down here all that often, Sully? Easter Monday clashes between the Hawks and the Cats. No, they were always at the G. I think we played one game down here. Might have been, I'm going to say 2006, um, in which we won. Uh, but I think that might have been the only one, yeah. yeah. The Cats are making their way off Cadinia Park. They posed and took a photo in front of the Joel, Shel- Selwood, stand. Joel Selwood stand. Put my teeth back in. It would have been good if Joel raced out and was just in the middle of the photo. It wasn't to be. His former teammates were there. The Cats winners by eight points. Let's join them with Rory Campbell. Guys, the reaction in on the Geelong bench when Patrick Dangerfield kicked that towering goal was uh, emphatic. Max Holmes jumped in the air and punched the air, so that energy's carried through. I expect we're in for a pretty rousing rendition of the song. They're just making their way into the change room here. A couple of the, the young boys being shoved into the middle. Just waiting for one more and we'll be away. So the Cats, winners at Cadinia Park by eight points to open season 2024 in front of 39,352 fans. So just have to dig our ways into the record books. The theory was if it was over 40,000, that would uh, surpass a record back in 1918. So we'll just have to go back and work out exactly, I assume this is the biggest crowd they've ever played in front of. But uh, we had the fireworks, we had the the light show. It uh, certainly sets the scene for what... uh, It'll be a pretty good place to come and watch footy throughout the season. I think it was a slightly more noisy, boisterous crowd than... Reverberated around the ground a bit more. To be totally honest, you come down to Geelong and it's it's not renowned for being a really noisy, boisterous home crowd advantage. Let's go back down to Rory Campbell. Guys, I'm joined by Mitch Duncan. Mitch, the reaction on the bench when Patrick Dangerfield kicked that towering captain's goal was emphatic. What did it feel like out there? <laughs> well, I actually thought it missed, so I was a little bit like, shit. oh, excuse me, uh, where are we setting up, where are we setting up, but, oh, geez, it uh, sailed through and still wasn't sure how long was left. I was asking the crowd a little bit, but, um, oh, it was, uh, yeah, it's a big time goal. It's a big occasion for the club tonight, the opening of the Joel Selwood stand. It's been a long time coming, I guess, your 19th man. How important was it to deliver on this occasion? Yeah, oh, obviously, round one you want to win, and... Obviously, the occasion, uh, the great man was here tonight too, commentating, I reckon. I'm not sure how he went, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's important to get a win first up. Uh, we've done a power of work against a quality opposition, really well-drilled side. So, um, yeah, proud of the boys. We stuck fat and uh, got over the line. What do you make of the performance? It seemed like it was a bit messy, bit messy, a bit sort of round one-ish out there at times. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was quite sweaty, so the ball was a little bit slippery. Um, we'd like to finish our work in front of goal. Um, but at the same time, they weren't kicking straight as well. So, um, yeah, it was a, obviously um, get the get the rust out a little bit. But as I said, we, we grinded away for four quarters against a you know quality outfit, and um, yeah, proud to, proud to get a win tonight. Well, Mitch, I'll throw it up to our team: Matt Clinch, Lauren Borden, Brad Sewell, and Nathan Burke. Thank you, uh, Mitch. Well done, mate. Brad Sewell here. Uh, Oliver Dempsey had a fantastic game tonight. Um, tell us a little bit about his prep so far in his preseason. Yeah, he's got all the media around him to, uh, down here at the minute. He was uh, very impressive. He's had a, a pretty faultless uh, couple of pre-seasons and, and seasons, to be honest. He's, um, he's put on some size. He's got a big engine. He's got some hops. So he's got all the tricks, and he's, you know what, he's a great kid and, and wants to learn and get better. He's in here, you know, all the time. And um, I play on him a little bit in the match play, uh, being a backline player, and he, he is hard to play on because he's good in the air, and he, he, uh, he's got an engine. So um, nah, it's great to see him get a bit of reward tonight. Blonde hair, pink boots. This hype isn't going to go to his head, is it? Uh, I don't think so. Um, no, we might have to colour those boots in black soon. <laughs> um, yeah, first game, frenetic. How did it feel out there? It's always a little bit different going from those practice matches into round one. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, it was um, 
especially against a contested side too, that you know likes like to get in um, in the clinches, but then also speed speed on the game from half back with um, you know Hill and Wanganim Lera, uh, Bonner there, a, a nice acquisition for him. So we knew it was going to be uh, pretty fast paced, but. I think you know most games are won in the in the middle. Not sure how the numbers stacked up, but you know I thought we uh, squeezed the opposition quite well. And as I said, we'd love to capitalise on our opportunities a bit more, but uh, we did enough. Uh, well, done, mate, Nathan Burke here. Um, how many rounds do you think it takes you in particular to sort of go? Yeah, now I'm now I'm in sort of footy mode. I've I've got the hang of. Sort of Footy. how the game's being played. Still yeah. trying to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually, oh, you can get, is there any more to that? No, question? no. Sorry. Um, I, this is actually the first time I played round one since 2020, so right. it was new to me. And um, you know, um, gonna, I'm proud of myself to, to get here one. But um, yeah, it probably takes a couple of games. You know, um, you go from playing against your team. I suppose you get a couple of pracky games, and opposition know what you do until to opposition, you know that. Obviously, go through your tape, but don't know exactly what, what you're trying to do. So it takes a little bit of adjusting. Um, yeah, speed of the game, fatigue. Yeah, it's always going to take a few games. Oh, two or three games, and I think um, you know we find our feet. Yep, and I think that was, was tonight. You were good at times, but I, I dare say you've got a lot of improvement in that game. But you come away with the four points, and I suppose... That's the, the main thing in the end is getting that four points, even though you didn't probably play at your best. Yeah, it, and, that, and that's a, you know, hopefully a sign of a good side where things aren't always on, on your terms, but you can grind a win away. And um, I thought we did that, um, played some good patches, um, played some poor patches, and, and it's all about learning. Um, you know, we've got some guys developing, we've got some senior guys still uh, trying to work out the game, as you just said. So, um, no, it's, it's a, a step forward in... Uh, for our preparation this year. Mitch Duncan is with us from the Cats rooms. Uh, Mitch, it's Matt Clinch. You mentioned your first uh, round one match since 2020. You spent some time in the US trying to get your body right. What were you trying to, to get out of that and, and what did you learn? Yeah, um, two weeks away with um, your dad and brother was a nice, away from the family. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just to hear a different voice, learning a few new things that I have brought back and implemented. But probably just reiterates, you know, we, we do a hell of a lot right over here, which is, um, you know, which is pleasing and yeah, it's probably just getting away, new voice, and um, you know, gaining some confidence in my body, which you know, I've strung together a full pre-season for the first time in a while. So um, that obviously helps, and hopefully, we can keep progressing forward. And having missed finals last year after a premiership, how much did that burn to want to get back to to climb the mountain and be a competitor in September? Yeah, it does. It does burn. Um, you know, it did uh, fire fire up the belly again, and you know, it's it's a hard game, and and to being very fortunate to be um, in the eight for you know. 13 of my, this is my fifth, well, 12 of my 14 seasons completed. So, um, yeah, we, we belong up there and we do everything we can to, to stay there. So, as I said, a lot of learning, a lot of hard work still and, um, yeah, see how the rest of the year pans out. It was a thrilling win, uh, Matt. Mitch, thanks as always for your time. Congratulations on the first four points of the season. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Mitch Duncan joining us from the Geelong Rooms. The Cats winners by eight points, 10, 16, 76 to the Saints, 9, 14, 68. We're going to take you for the last few minutes of the match between the Gold Coast Suns and Adelaide, where the Suns are going to record a, a pretty famous victory to go 2 and 0. But first, the votes for the ABC Footballer of the Year as Brad Saul works his way through the list. Yes. <laughs> you forgot it. And uh, I did forget. Um, uh, it, it's a little bit difficult to go past the, the three uh, three players for Geelong, just given the, the dominance um, statistically, although the scoreboard may not suggest that. As I continue to pad to <laughs> uh, further look at the stats, um, I'm going to give one vote to Ollie Dempsey. He was terrific early, um, composed. Uh, three goals, one uh, to go with his 15 disposals. Um, two votes to Jeremy Cameron. I thought he was instrumental when they needed him the most. His ability to work up and down the ground and assist in defence uh, was really important. And uh, how many times this man received three votes? Um, pluck a number, Clinchy. But Dangerfield with his, um, his match-winning goal, uh, 25 disposals. Uh, nine score involvements to go with his 1-1. One, one. Three votes. Pete Dangerfield, a Brownlow medalist, so he's heard it a few times before. Uh, Geelong winners by eight points. Uh, thank you, Sully. Thank you to Berkey. Thanks, great, guys. Great to have you for another season. Thanks to Rory Campbell down on the boundary, to Mitch Turner back in the studio, and to Stuart Hollywood Baker as well.
Great to call with you, Loz. We'll do it again next Saturday night. Do it every Saturday. We will. And we'll be back on air tomorrow from midday with Cameron Ling for Grandstand AFL Sunday. But let's take you, as the luxury we get to do, to Carrara for the final stages of the match there. It's the Gold Coast Suns 8 11 59, leading the Adelaide Crows 6 4 40. We join Quentin Hull, Michael Price, Matthew Primus, Jeff White, and Zane Bojack. Enjoy your night. Yep. Oh, it is. Kick from Laird, Dean deliberate. And Alex, it's going to be welcome to those joining us on the Gold Coast. Quentin Hull, Michael Price, along with Matt Primus, Jeff White and Zane Bojack. Crows making a game of this one late. Suns have been dominant, but Adelaide's kicked the last three goals in slippery conditions. 19 points the lead to the Suns, and we've got a little over seven minutes to go. Crowd ripple of applause there for Will Powell, who takes the grab. Story of the night, probably been just the hunt of the Suns. They've been hard at the footy. Inside 50s are pretty tight. Suns been more effective and just seemingly better winning the contest as Powell kicks a long ball to the pocket. Almost a mark to Wits falling back with the flight.